Do you wanna learn how to start a free website that you can monetize and earn a passive income with? Well, stick around because in this video, I'm gonna show you how to start a completely free website and online store using the new and improved Strikingly Website Builder. Hey, what's up? Ben here from blogwithben.com. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to build, grow, and monetize a completely free website using Strikingly. If you have a product, business, or a service to promote, then this video is for you because I'm gonna take you step by step and show you how easy it is to create a beautiful and professional website using Strikingly's new website builder. Now, before we get started, if you're new to my channel, welcome, I am so glad you found me. Here you'll find full link step-by-step -step tutorials and reviews all aimed to help you build, grow, and monetize a professional blog. And if you haven't done so already, I encourage you to subscribe to the Blog With Ben YouTube channel. That way you could stay up to date with all the videos that come out in the future. All right, with that being said, let's take a closer look at what we're gonna be creating in this video. So as I just mentioned, in this tutorial, I'm gonna walk you through the process of building a professional website using Strikingly and their amazing free website builder. This all-inclusive website builder has helped bloggers and entrepreneurs launch over 12 million websites and online stores, and I can't even begin to tell you how ridiculously easy it is to use. I come from the world of WordPress, and when I first started using Strikingly, I was blown away at how convenient and stress-free they made the build process. There's no coding or a huge technical learning curve to overcome. If you can write an email, you can build a website with Strikingly. It's really that simple. And speaking of that, we're gonna be creating this website that you're looking at right now. This is a fully functional website with blogging capabilities and comes standard with some pretty amazing features. For starters, the homepage allows you to present your content in a full width design that comes with a ton of cool add-ons to help you build and grow your business. Additionally, everything you've seen so far can be easily customized, doesn't require any coding, and can be built to match your desired brand. I should also point out, Strikingly has hundreds of templates to choose from that give you the freedom to create as many free sites as you want. You could start a food blog, a personal finance website, a health and fitness site, a lifestyle blog, the possibilities are endless. And Strikingly is always adding new templates to their library so you'll never run out of new ideas. And one final note, people nowadays are spending an increased amount of time on their mobile devices, which means they'll expect your site to be responsive. And having a responsive design not only helps you meet and exceed these expectations, but it's also a ranking signal put in place by Google. So if you want to be found on the search engines, your blog needs to be responsive. And as you can see, the free Strikingly Web Builder and their templates are 100% responsive and they look absolutely beautiful. The user experience on the desktop is mimicked on any mobile device or tablet, and the responsiveness of their templates ensure that you're meeting the mobile requirements of Google's search algorithm. And I could literally go on and on about all of the amazing features that Strikingly offers, and we'll definitely cover them throughout the rest of the tutorial, but just know that Strikingly is known for two things, being ridiculously easy to use and having the best customer support. So with that being said, let's get started. Okay, to get started with your free plan, head over to Strikingly, and I've put a link in the video description below that will take you to the Strikingly homepage. And in order to access that link, simply open the video description by clicking show more at the bottom of the video. And my Strikingly affiliate link will be the first one listed there. Now, yes, this is an affiliate link, but I'll only earn a commission if you decide to make a purchase and upgrade from the free plan. However, if you use the free plan, I don't earn a commission and your site is still 100% free forever. And that will bring you to the Strikingly sign up page. And as you can see, all you need is an email address to get started. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, everything we're gonna do in this tutorial will be 100% free. But before we get started, let me show you exactly what your free account will include. Now, Strikingly does offer paid plans that you can upgrade to any time. However, the free plan that we're gonna be using in this video will cost you $0 forever. It also lets you create unlimited free sites with free SSL certificates, ensuring that your sites are safe and secure and protecting your visitors' data. You'll get a free strikingly.com domain, and we'll go over what that is exactly in a few minutes. You'll have five gigabytes of monthly bandwidth and 500 megabytes of total storage per site. That's pretty good if you're just starting out. 
You'll also be able to create and add up to five additional pages. You can also sell one product on your site if you have anything to sell. You can invite collaborators if you have additional people working or helping you build your site. And then you'll have 24 seven technical support from Strikingly's knowledgeable customer success team. I also wanna add that since we're making a blog in this video, your free plan allows you to publish unlimited blog posts with the 60,000 character limit per post. This isn't listed here, but this is an amazing benefit because you're not capped at how many posts you can create. You don't typically see that with these types of free plans, so I just wanted to point that out. Additionally, Strikingly also offers email marketing services with every free plan. So in addition to building your blog, you'll also learn how to grow your email list and add opt-in forms on your site as well. This was another feature that blew me away because you typically have to pay for email marketing tools and services. So the fact that you can get started with email marketing for free is a huge bonus. Now, you can upgrade your plan if you'd like, and I promise that this is the only time you'll hear me talk about price, but Strikingly does offer paid plans if you find that you'd like to upgrade from your free plan, which you can do so at any time. You can also downgrade to the free plan at any time as well. Just keep that in mind if you decide to upgrade. And taking a closer look at the plans, they have limited, pro, and VIP plans that give you access to more features. I should point out that these plans are billed annually, meaning you'd pay for the entire year up front, but Strikingly also offers a month-by-month -month plan. This does increase the monthly price a little bit, but you aren't locked in for a full year. You're essentially paying as you go. Finally, all paid plans come with a risk-free 14-day free trial. So you could test out the paid plans for two weeks before paying to see if it's a good fit for you and your website. And if you find that you'd like to upgrade, I would greatly appreciate it if you would use my affiliate link located in the video description below, which is blogwithbin.com forward slash strikingly. If you decide to make a purchase, I'll earn a commission, but you're helping me keep my blog up and running and you're helping me provide for my family. So either way, thank you so much for all your support. Okay, with that being said, let's start building your free website. So head over to the Strikingly homepage if you're not there already. And once you do so, to get started with your free site, simply enter your name, email address, and create a password. So let me fill this out really quick and create my account. And like I said, I'm gonna be starting from scratch so that we could go step by step on how to create this free website. All right, and then once everything's filled out, go ahead and click the green Get Started button. And this will take you to the templates. This is where you'll select the face, so to speak, of your site. And all of these come ready-made for you to start creating. And as you'll see in a few moments, you can literally edit anything within the template right there on the spot. It's like a real-time editor, and there is absolutely no coding or design experience needed. And feel free to browse and preview the templates to see what works best for you and the vision you have for your website. I should also point out that you aren't locked into a template after you choose it. You can easily swap templates within the website editor, which you'll see in a few moments. Either way, Strikingly keeps the site building process stress-free and super easy to use. Okay, so for this video, we're gonna be using the co-working template. And if you hover your mouse over any of the templates, you'll have the ability to view an example of the template and essentially preview it before using it to see how the template behaves in real time. And clicking the view example button will open a little demo letting you see how the co-working template looks and feels. Now, keep in mind that in this video, we're gonna be creating a website and online store for a yoga studio, and we'll be changing the template quite a bit. So think of this co-working template as a foundation, but one of the main reasons why I love Strikingly is how easy they make editing these templates. So with that being said, let's get started. Okay, go ahead and click the Start Editing button in the upper right-hand side of the screen. And this will bring you to the all new Strikingly Editor. Now they offer a super quick tour to show you around, but you could skip that because I'm gonna show you around right now. You can always revisit the tour by clicking the Take Tour button in the bottom left corner of the editor. This will launch the Strikingly Tour, but like I said, I'm gonna show you around right now. So you can close this by clicking the No Thanks button. All right, so the Strikingly Editor can be broken down into two sections. On the left, you have this toolbar that allows you to edit and navigate to different sections of your site. Then on the right is your template, 
where you can make content and design edits in real time. And trust me, this is very easy to use once you get familiar with where everything is and how to use it. So with that being said, let's take a closer look at your toolbar. First, we have your customization features where you can edit the styles, add an online store, configure your email marketing, set up your domain name, and so much more. These four sections are very useful and we'll be using them quite a bit throughout the tutorial. Next are the site sections. And as you'll see in a few moments, your site is broken up into different sections. You can add, delete, rearrange, and jump to your sections all from right here in the toolbar. Then below your section list is where you can add new sections. This gives you the ability to add a blog, picture gallery, contact forms, new pages, and much, much more. And we'll definitely be using this a little later on in the video. Next, in the bottom left corner, you have your preview and publishing options. This is where you can preview your work and see how the changes you make will look whenever you publish them. Publishing is essentially making your site live for the world to see. Remember, any changes that you make right now won't be visible to the outside world until you click the publish button. Then if you ever get stuck or have a question while you're building your site, just click this question mark icon in the bottom right corner of the screen. This lets you search Strikingly's knowledge base and contact their support team. I've used this quite a few times when I was just starting out and trust me, they are super helpful. Finally, if you ever need to leave the editor, simply click the exit button located in the bottom left corner of your toolbar. And this will take you to the site dashboard. This is where you can create a new site and it's also where all of your sites will be stored. This is what you'll see every time you log into your Strikingly account from now on. And to get back to the editor, simply click the edit button next to the site that you want to edit. All right, now that you know your way around the editor, let me show you how to edit your content. One of the many reasons why I love Strikingly is how easy they make creating websites with their new website editor. There isn't any coding or high level tech knowledge needed. They've made the design and content creation process super intuitive and easy to implement with this new website editor. So before we start editing and designing your site, let me show you some best practices on how to use the new editor. Okay, as we went over in the editor walkthrough, all of these templates are broken down into sections and each section is displayed and accessible within the toolbar and your primary navigation menu at the top of the screen. Additionally, strikingly templates are all one page websites. You can obviously add more pages, which we will do a little later on, but the foundation of the site and all of the initial sections are housed on the home page. And let me show you what I mean. So first we have the home section. This is the very first section, which is actually a full screen section that includes the title, text, button, and background image. Then to navigate to other sections, you can either click the section title in the toolbar on the left-hand side of the screen, or click the menu item within the primary nav at the top of the screen. And if we click the about section in the toolbar, the screen automatically scrolls down and takes you to that specific section of the homepage that is displaying a heading, text, and an image below it. I should point out that this is how it behaves on the front end of your site as well. If your site's visitors click on a section in the primary nav, they'll be taken to that exact section of your homepage. Next, we have the community section, and clicking on this section within your toolbar will take you to that particular section of the homepage. And as you can see, this has a heading with an image gallery and a solid colored background. And I should mention that all of these sections and their titles can be edited. And we'll definitely be changing the names of some of these sections a little later on. And then for the sake of the example, if we click on the book menu item in the primary nav, you'll see that it behaves just like if we were to click the book section within the toolbar on the left. And this is where your web form will be housed and it's how you'll grow your email list. And finally, we have the footer. This isn't actually considered a section, so the only way someone could get here is by scrolling all the way to the bottom of your site. But this is still an important part of your site, and we'll be editing this a little later on. Then to get back to the top of the page, simply click the home section, and you'll be taken to the first section of your site. Next, let's go over how to edit the content within each section. Now, I should point out that we're not going to actually edit the content just yet, but I wanna give you a solid understanding of how the editor works before you start making actual changes to your site. Okay, so if you look towards the upper right corner of each section, you'll see two buttons labeled layout and background. 
Each button allows you to edit specific parts of each section and is how you can make some drastic design changes to your site with a few clicks of the mouse. For example, if we click the background button, this will give you the ability to change the image of the section's background or remove the image completely and replace it with a solid color or video. Strikingly gives you a ton of royalty-free images and videos to use, or you can upload your own all from this little tool. And we'll be doing that in a few moments, but next let's move on to the layout button. And clicking this gives you the ability to quickly change the layout of the content within the section. And as you can see within this particular section's layout, you can change the width, height, and content position. And just to give you an idea of what you could do here, if we open the content position dropdown, you could change the position from centered to left and then to the right like so. Again, just a quick example of how flexible and easy this website builder is to use. Another thing I love about this editor is that you can easily revert your changes if you make a mistake, which trust me, I have done multiple times. So check this out. Let's say that you click the reset button or make a change that you don't necessarily like. Whoa, where did everything go? Well, if you look in the upper left corner of your toolbar, you'll see a little undo button with an arrow icon. Simply click it and the changes will be reverted back to their original state. This is a huge benefit if you make a mistake or click on something by accident that changes the layout and you don't know what you did. Just click the undo button and everything goes back to normal. I love it. And speaking of making changes, let me show you how to edit the text within this section. If you can edit an email, Word doc, or Google doc, then you'll have no trouble editing content within Strikingly's web editor. Okay, so each block of text you see can be edited in real time within the template. Simply place your cursor within the section of text you want to edit, and it will highlight it and even open an editing toolbar, giving you more editing options for this specific block of text. Then to change it, just start typing. Super easy. Same thing goes for the text below our heading. Just place your cursor within the block of text and start typing. Now, you could change the style of font and color of this text, but we'll cover that in a few moments. And again, if you make changes that you don't like, simply click the undo button to revert back to your original content. You also have the ability to redo your changes as well with the redo button. I use the undo and redo button so much when I'm building my sites, they are such a lifesaver, trust me. Another thing I want to point out is that as you're working on your site, your changes are being auto-saved, which I think is very helpful, and it's notated here within your toolbar. However, you can also manually save your changes here as well by clicking the Save Now link. Next, to edit the buttons, just click on them, and this will open the button editing widget. Here you could change the content of the button that consists of the text and link it points to, then you can edit the design of the button by clicking design within the widget. And this will give you the ability to edit the size, style, alignment, and color of each button. Pretty cool. You can also remove the button altogether if you'd like by clicking the remove button, but we're definitely going to be using this so I'm keeping the button in place. And then we'll actually edit the button a little later on, so I'm gonna exit out of here by clicking cancel. Then moving on to the next section, which is the About section. So go ahead and click About within your toolbar, and that will take you to the particular part of the home page. Then you'll see that the editing features are pretty similar. You have the Layout and Background Editing buttons, along with an Add Item button below the content, and this gives you the ability to add additional content to the section if you'd like. And speaking of the content, this section gives you a heading and text with an image below it. Again, all of this content is customizable within the template. For example, the text editor is the exact same as the home section. Simply place your cursor in each section and start typing. And as you can see, each block of text can be edited right here in real time within the web editor. Then below that, if you click on the image, you have the ability to edit or remove and replace the image altogether, which we'll do in a few moments. Then the remaining sections are pretty much the same when it comes to editing, and we'll definitely come back to this when we start building our site. But for now, let's move on and create your strikingly domain name. In this part of the tutorial, we're gonna create your domain name. 
This will be the URL that you'll share with the world, and it's how people will visit and access your site. So to set your domain, you'll want to open the settings located in your toolbar, and this will bring you to your site's backend settings. And for this part of the video, we'll be configuring your domain. So make sure you have domain selected. Then towards the right hand side of the screen, you'll see the domain settings. Now, since we're using the free plan in this tutorial, you'll only be using the strikingly.com URL. And what this means is that instead of a domain like blogwithbin.com, you'll be forced to use a subdomain where mystrikingly.com will always follow whatever you choose your domain to be. It's currently set to be all these numbers, but you have the ability to make this whatever you want, as you'll see in a few moments when we change it. Just know that since we're using the free plan, your site's URL will always be followed by strikingly.com. Now, I have to say that having a domain like this isn't ideal for SEO. However, if you're just starting out and you're on a budget, this will get you started and allow you to still publish a great site. But if you want to register a new domain that doesn't use mystrikingly.com in it, then you could do so by upgrading your account. Again, I would greatly appreciate it if you would use my affiliate link, which is blogwithbin.com slash strikingly when purchasing one of the paid plans and upgrading to a regular domain. And you can access that link in the video description below. But like I said for this video, we're doing everything for free. So we'll be using the mystrikingly.com subdomain. Okay, so for this example, this site is going to be for a yoga studio and I'm going to call it Balboa Yoga. So for the domain name, it will be balboayoga.mystrikingly.com. So under the strikingly.com URL section, replace the default domain, which is all these numbers, and replace it with what you want your domain to be. Again, I'm making this Balboa Yoga, so I'll type that in the field provided. And when you're creating your domain, be sure not to use spaces in between the words and don't use uppercase letters. And there we go. Then click the update button and our URL is set. Now, you won't be able to see it until you publish your site, but just know that from here on out, your free site will use the mystrikingly.com subdomain for your domain. Now, remember, you can upgrade to a regular domain at any time, but that will mean you'll have to pay for a paid plan. But again, for this tutorial, we're using the free domain. Okay, let's exit the settings and head back to the editor. So click back to site design in the upper left corner of your toolbar. And moving on, next let's go over how to configure the site styles starting with the color scheme and fonts. So another really cool feature of this new strikingly website editor is that you can quickly and easily change the entire color scheme of your site within the toolbar. Simply open the styles section and then click on the color scheme tab. Then once opened, you can change the primary colors used with this color picker tool. Towards the top of the color picker, you'll see a color bar that shows the percentage of what color is used throughout the site. You can even swap them by clicking those arrow icons in the middle if you'd like. Then to change the color, you can use the color picker like so. And as you do, you'll see where the colors are used and what they look like throughout your site. So let's say we pick this reddish orange color. You'll notice that it's used in the buttons and menu items, but it's always a good idea to skim through the template to see where the colors are used before landing on what color scheme you wanna move forward with. And as we scroll down to the bottom of the page, you can see that this primary color is used in the button but it's also used in the social icons within the footer as well. Now I should point out that there are some colors that can only be changed one at a time manually, like this background and text color within the primary nav. As you could see, even though we changed the primary teal color to red, it didn't change these colors. That's why it's always a good idea to audit your site as you're making changes to ensure that you're keeping the design and style consistent. And we'll update these colors a little later on in the video, but for now, let's check out the secondary color. So if we click the secondary color in the color bar, which is like this dark gray, almost black color, and change it to green, you'll notice that it's used in the primary nav, as well as an overlay that really changes the look and feel of the site. 
almost more than the primary color. So feel free to experiment with different colors to see what works best for you and your site. However, for this example, I'm gonna keep the original color in place. So I'll click my trusty undo button in the upper left corner of the toolbar. And as I do that, you'll notice the green color is gone. And then I'll keep clicking undo to get the primary color back to the original teal color. There we go. Now another way that you could set the color is to use the hex color code. So let's open the color picker tool again by clicking on the color bar. And then I'm changing the primary color, so make sure you have that color selected by clicking on it. And you can tell that it's selected by the white outline. Then within the text field below the tool, simply type your desired hex color code like so. And the hex color code will always start with the number symbol followed by six numbers and letters. And for this example, I'm using this tan color. There we go. It'll match much better as we start designing the layout of the site, but you can always come back here and change the colors if you'd like. And if you need help finding hex color codes, I've added a link in the video description below that'll take you to color-hex.com. The site gives you access to literally every hex color code to choose from. Simply find the code that you wanna use, copy it, and paste it in the color picker tool back at Strikingly. Okay, so once you're done configuring the color scheme, click the Done button to save your changes. And moving on to the fonts. So opening that tab will give you the ability to change the font family used in the title, headings, body text, and buttons. And as I hover my mouse over each one, you can see which font will be affected in the editor because it will be highlighted green. Then let's test this out really quick. So if you click on the title font within the toolbar, it opens up all of the different font styles that you could use. And then as I hover my mouse over the different fonts, we get a preview of what they'll look like on the site. So I'm gonna select this special elite font for this quick example. And you can see that our title font has changed drastically. But one thing to keep in mind is that there are other areas of your site that will use this title font. And if we scroll down, you can see that this new font is being used anywhere the title font is displayed. Just keep that in mind as you're selecting the font family you wanna use for each type of font. And scrolling down, you could see that the title font is used within these sections as well. So again, just keep this in mind. Then we'll skip changing the heading, body text, and button fonts, but the steps to change them are the exact same as changing the title font. Also, I'm actually going to use the original title font, so this is when our trusty undo button can come in handy because I don't remember the exact font I started with, so let's click the undo button in the upper left corner of the toolbar, And there we go. Next, we have the header and navigation settings, and this gives you the ability to change the entire layout of your header, or what I like to call the primary navigation menu. And to give you an idea of what this can do, if we click on layout, you'll be presented with different versions of layouts to choose from. And as you can see, they can drastically change the overall look and feel of your site. Now, we'll come back to this a little later on in the video, so I'll undo these changes for now, but again, this is yet another reason why I love Strikingly. Typically, a change like this would require a ton of coding and technical know-how, but Strikingly's website builder has really streamlined the design process so that you can make some major changes to your site with the click of your mouse. Pretty cool. All right, next we have the sections settings, and this gives you the ability to change the shape, width, padding and alignment of the sections of the content within each section throughout your entire site. But I'm leaving the default settings in place, but feel free to test this out if you'd like. Then moving on to the buttons. And this gives you the ability to change the color, shape, and fill style of all of the buttons. For example, if you click on the color swatch, this opens a color picker tool where you could choose from a set of pre-made colors that match your color scheme. Another cool thing you could do here is change the shape of the buttons. You could choose between square, which is the default shape, or rounded, and then pill. But I'm gonna set this back to the default square shape. Then the last thing you could change is the fill style of the button. There's solid and ghost, and ghost is like an outline of the button, but I'm gonna set it back to solid. There we go. Below that is the text size and color options. 
And this is where you can change the color and font size of the body, title, subtitle, item title, and item subtitle fonts. Again, remember that if you change the font size of a particular type of font like the body, it'll change the font size anywhere else that type of font is used. But this gives you a ton of flexibility and creative control over the font of your site. Next we have animations, and I'm not going to adjust these in this tutorial, but you can experiment with the different animation settings if you'd like. Finally, you can even change the entire template being used here. If you come to find that the co-working template isn't for you, you can quickly change the entire template with a click of the mouse. And as you can see, you can rifle through all of the templates that are available, and Strikingly is always adding new and updated templates to their library, so feel free to check them out here. Okay, that's going to do it for the style configuration. Let's head back to the editor, so click the Back to Edit Styles button, and then click the Back to Site Design button. And moving on. Next, let's start actually editing the content of your homepage. All right, now the fun begins. This is when you actually get to start designing your site and editing content on the homepage. Now that you have a solid understanding of Strikingly's new website editor, let's put your new skills into action and start designing your site. So, the way I like to work is from top to bottom. We'll start with the very first home section and then work our way down to the footer. Okay, so the first thing we're going to edit is the text within the home section, starting with the title and subtitle. Instead of co-working in an innovative environment, I'm going to replace that with a logo. Now, you obviously don't have to build your site exactly like I do. You can keep the title text here in place and change it to something that is aligned with your business or brand. Plus, you have the option to add your logo in the primary nav as well if you'd like. But for this example, I'm going to remove this text and replace it with a logo. So the first thing I want to do is completely remove this block of text. And all you're going to do is place your cursor on the text, and this will open some editing options, one of them being the trash can in the upper right corner. And clicking on that will completely remove the text. And you'll probably get a notice asking you if you're sure you want to remove it. We do, so click OK, and it's gone. Next, I want to add a logo. And as a business owner, I'm sure you already have a logo, but if you don't, one way you can create a logo is by using the free design website Canva.com. And I'll put a link to it in the video description below, but Canva.com is a graphic design website that allows you to quickly and easily create images, logos, graphics, etc. Now, for this example, I've created this white logo using Canva's pre-made templates, and it currently has a gray background here, but that's just so that you could see what it looks like. When I add the logo to my site, I'm going to remove the gray background and make it transparent, which you can do in Canva when you download the image. Just save it as a PNG with the transparent background. Also, I should point out that this yoga studio, Balboa Yoga, is a fictitious business, meaning it's fake. I'm just creating it for this video tutorial. So when you create your logo for your business, there are certain legal and trademark issues you'll want to pay attention to before you create a logo to use for your business. I highly recommend talking to a small business or trademark lawyer before you move forward using any type of logo for your business and website. All right, now that we have our logo, let's head back to Strikingly. And in order to add it to the home section, simply hover your mouse directly over the button and you should see this blue line and plus icon. Clicking on that will allow you to add various types of media and elements to the home section. And you'll notice that they've broken it down into elements and element blocks, as well as a few pro features that are only available if you upgrade to a paid plan. However, for this example, we're using an image, so click the image element, and this will add the image block. Then to add the actual image, hover your mouse over it and click edit, and this will open the image widget. Then we're uploading a new image, so click on upload, and that will take you to the media library where you have a few options. You can upload an image from your computer, you can use a previously uploaded image, or use an image from the Strikingly library. You can also link to an image or upload from the iOS app, or even drag the image file here to upload it. 
And finally, you can upload an image from your computer, which is what I'm going to do. So I'll click the Browse Your Computer button, and then I'll find the image that I want to use. And boom, check that out. We now have a professional looking image with a transparent background on the homepage. Then before we move on, there is one thing I recommend doing with all the images that you add to your site, and that's add the alternative text, commonly referred to as the alt text. And if you're unfamiliar with alt text, it's essentially text that is used to tell the search engines what an image is since they can't actually see the image. So the alt text tells Google and other search engine bots crawling your site what the image is. And updating your alt text for your images is a best practice and will help improve your SEO, which stands for search engine optimization. And if you're new to SEO, we'll cover it in greater detail a little later on, but optimizing your site for SEO will help you rank higher in the search results and help more people find your website. Okay, so to update the alt text, you'll wanna edit the image again. So go ahead and click on it. And then within the image editing widget, you'll see that you have a few options to where you can link to the image and add the alt text. And then to update the alt text, click on the add alt text button. And then in the field provided, add a brief description of what is in the image. And try to use keywords that are related to your site. So for this image, I'm going to have the alt text say Balboa Yoga logo. And then click the save button. And our image is now optimized for the search engines. Nice work. All right, moving on to the button. So I definitely wanna change the call to action here. So let's edit it by clicking on it. And this opens the button editor widget and instead of book a space, I'm going to direct traffic to a page where people can sign up for yoga class. So in this field, I'm gonna change the text to say sign up for class. And then we'll update the link URL a little later on, so you can leave that alone for now. And then click the Save button to save your changes. And we now have our button. But like I said, we'll add our link to this button a little later on because we still need to create our yoga class signup page. Okay, next it's time to change the background image. So if you recall, we can make some pretty drastic changes to the background of each section by clicking the background button in the upper right corner of the section. And this opens the background widget where you can edit the color of the background or replace it with an image or video. For example, if you wanna use a solid color for your background, select color, And this will give you a color picker tool where you can cycle through the different color swatches by hovering your mouse over them to see what they look like. And one thing I really like about this is that if you're using title font here instead of a logo, the font automatically changes color to better suit what it thinks would look best against the background color. You can always manually change the font color, but the automatic color changing font is a pretty cool feature that could save you some time in the design process. Next, you can add an image in the background. If you click image, this will give you some options, and as you hover your mouse over each image, you'll get a preview of what it will look like. As you can see, it could drastically change the look and feel of your site with this small design change. Then if you click the More button, you'll be presented with a massive library of royalty-free images that you could browse through and use. On the left, they have the images broken down into categories, helping you easily find images that are in line with your niche, and as you can see, they have a ton of great looking professional images to choose from. Then you could also use video as your background in the home section and clicking on video will open their video library. And again, these are royalty free videos that you can use as your background within the home section. And clicking on the different categories like nature will narrow your search and show you all of the nature related videos that you could choose from. And if you hover your mouse over each video, you'll get a preview of what they look like. And just for the sake of this example, if we select this video, it will completely replace the static image and use the video in the full screen home section. Again, just another way to diversify your content and bring your site to life. 
Now, one thing to keep in mind about videos is that they can sometimes cause slower loading speeds. I haven't really noticed a loading issue with Strikingly in their videos, but just keep that in mind if you decide to use a video for your background. However, for this example, I'm going to use an image. And as we just went over, you could choose from the free stock photos that Strikingly has in their library, or you could use a site like pixels.com, and this is another stock photo site that gives you more options when it comes to royalty-free stock photos to use. Now, as always, you'll want to read the fine print of all the licensing or copyright of the images before using them on your site. And Pixels lays it out pretty well where they'll say that you can use their images on your website, blog, or app, as well as promote your product and so on. But one way around all this is just to use your own images. And for this example, I'm going to pretend that I have my own images of my yoga studio that I'll use for this site. So back at Strikingly to upload your own image in the background widget, click the upload button. And once again, we're uploading an image from our computer. So click the browse your computer button. And find the image you want to use. And then depending on the size of the image, it may take a few seconds to upload. So just sit tight really quick. And voila, looks beautiful. We have a full screen image that is aligned with our brand and color scheme. Looks great. Okay, let's save these changes. So click the save button. And that's going to do it for our home section. Now, as I mentioned a little earlier, we'll revisit the sign up for class button whenever we create our sign up for class page. But for now, let's move on to the next section, which is the about us section. So go ahead and click on about within the toolbar on the left hand side of the screen or in the primary nav at the top of your screen. And this will take us to the section of the home page that we want to edit. Now, in this particular section, the template has created an About Us section where you can add a few paragraphs introducing yourself, your business, or your product, followed by an image. This is a great way to display a quick bio and let your audience know who you are and what you're all about. Okay, so the first thing you can edit is the title text. And this is just like any other text within the editor. To edit it, simply highlight it and begin typing. Now for this example, I'm actually going to leave the About Us heading and dummy text below it in place. But again, this is where you would want to type out your intro and it's a great opportunity to create a first impression and let your audience know what you're all about. Next is the image and we obviously want to change this. So hover your mouse over the image and click on it to edit it. And then this will open the image editing widget and we want to replace this image. So click the replace icon and this will take you to the media library. And for this example, I'm going to upload my own image again. So I'll click the browse your computer button and then find the image I want to use. And if you recall, I'm creating a fictitious yoga studio. So I'll use a stock photo of some yoga enthusiasts, but you'll obviously want to use an image that is related to your business or product or whatever your site is about. And there we go. Looks great. Then don't forget about the alt text. Remember, this is how the search engines will know what your image is, and it will have a positive impact on your site's SEO. So let's update this image's alt text. So hover your mouse over the image and click on edit. Then within the image widget, click the add alt text button. And within that field, type out your alt text. And remember to be descriptive and try to use keywords. Perfect. Then click the save button. And our about section is good to go. Looks great. Now, before we move on, I want to show you another option you have when it comes to how you can present your content within this section. Let's say you have a video that introduces your business or product. And instead of this image, you'd like to use the video instead. Well, the strikingly web editor makes it super simple to do with the video element. So check this out. If we reopen the image widget by hovering your mouse over the image and click on edit. You'll see that you also have a video section. And when you click on video, you'll have the ability to embed a video from YouTube, Vimeo and more. Now strikingly has a Vimeo video link there as a placeholder, but all you need to do is get the shareable URL from your video and paste it here. So for this example, I'm going to use a YouTube video. 
And all you do is once you're at the YouTube video, click the share icon underneath the video, and then you'll be presented with the video URL. And that's what we want. So click the copy button to copy it. Then head back to Strikingly and simply remove the placeholder URL and then paste that video URL from YouTube and then click the save button and boom you now have an embedded and responsive video on your homepage. Again, I totally realize that not everyone will have a YouTube or Vimeo video introducing their business or product, but I just wanted to show you different ways that you can get creative when presenting your content. All right, so I'm actually gonna undo this change and put the image back, so I'll click the undo button in the upper left corner of the toolbar. And there we go. Now, one final thing I wanna point out about this section is that you may see the spell check red lines within your content. I obviously have a lot of them due to the fact that I'm using dummy text, but you'll obviously wanna keep your eye out for these since it's telling you that there are grammatical errors. However, these red lines won't show up on your live site, even if they're in your web editor. Just wanted to let you know that. Okay, moving on to our next section, which is titled Community. So once again, go ahead and click on the Community section within the toolbar or in the primary nav. And this particular section has a heading, an image gallery, and is using a solid colored background, which we can edit right here. So first thing I wanna change is the heading. Currently it's titled Our Community, but for this example, I'm gonna use this section to display images of the yoga studio. So instead of Our Community, I'll change this text to say Explore the Studio. Next, let's swap out these placeholder images and update the image gallery. So hover your mouse over them and click Manage Gallery. Then from here, you can import images and videos to display. And then on the right is where you can edit the image, add a title and description, and add a link as well. Now we obviously wanna get rid of these images, so to remove them, click the Delete link and one by one, you'll see the images disappear. Next, it's time to add our images to the gallery. And keep in mind that these are the images that will display in this particular section of the homepage. So to add images, click where it says import image. And hopefully you're starting to get familiar with these steps. I'm uploading images from my computer, so I'll click the browse my computer button and then find the images I wanna use. And then check this out, you can do a batch upload. So I'm gonna upload all three images at once. And then due to the fact that we're uploading three images at once, it may take a few seconds to upload, so just sit tight really quick. And boom, we have our image gallery. Now, as I previously went over a few seconds ago, you can add a title and description to each image that will actually display below the images on the homepage, but I'm gonna leave them blank for this example. Next, you can rearrange the images and change the order they'll be displayed on your homepage by dragging and dropping them like so. It's pretty handy. And I like that order. Then once you've added and situated all the images within your gallery, click the Save button. And we now have our yoga studio image gallery. Now, one thing I wanna point out again is the text below the images. It's hard to see due to the colors, but this text is just a placeholder. It won't show up on your live site unless you added a title and description for each image within the image gallery. All right, next I wanna change this background color. So let's open the background widget by clicking the background button in the upper right corner of the section. And then make sure you have color selected and find the color you wanna use and click on it. I like that gray color, so we'll go with that. Then click the Save button to save your changes. And next, I wanna show you the layout options you have for this section. So if you click the Layout button, you'll have the ability to configure how the content is displayed within the section. You can change things like the structure, columns, image shape, section width, spacing, and much more. Again, changes like this can really impact the overall look and feel of your site. It would normally take a substantial amount of coding to implement. However, with the Strikingly Web Editor, you can make some pretty drastic changes with a few clicks of your mouse. 
Now, I actually want to use the original layout, so I'll set the layout to the default settings. You can also use the undo button as well, but looks pretty good. All right, so let's save this. So click the save button. And you know, now that I'm looking at this section, I actually want to change the heading color. So it's currently black, but to change it, simply highlight it. And then within the editor, click that little color swatch. And within the color picker, choose the new color you want the font to be. And I'm going to go with white. There we go. And the final thing I'm going to do in this section is change its title. If you recall, this template initially titled it community and that title is also being used in our primary nav. So now that this section is showcasing the yoga studio, I'm going to change this to explore. So to change the actual section title that shows up in the primary nav within your toolbar on the left hand side of the screen, click that little gear icon next to the section that you want to edit. And this will bring up some editing options, one of them being renaming the section. So go ahead and click where it says rename. And within the field provided, change it to whatever you want it to be. And like I said, I'm changing this to explore. And there we go. Then click the green arrow to save your changes. And now our section has been renamed and the menu item in the primary nav has also been renamed. So now when someone clicks on explore, it'll take them to the explore studio section. All right, moving on to the next section, which is titled book. And this section is where our contact form and address will be located. And the idea here is we'll have a web form that our visitors can fill out if they have any questions, suggestions, business propositions, etc. Having a contact form is not only good for business, but it's also good for SEO. Google looks at whether or not sites have a contact page and form on their site, and they use it as a ranking signal, meaning if you have a contact form on your website, you're telling Google that you're a real business and you are giving your audience and customers a way to reach you. Google likes this and will position you higher in the search engine rankings, so bottom line, it's always recommended to have a contact form on your site. And luckily, Strikingly makes it super simple to not only add a contact form to your website, but to manage form submissions and reply to them as well, all from the back end of your Strikingly account. And we'll definitely cover that a little later on in the tutorial, but for now, let's update this title. So instead of book a space, I'm going to change this to contact us. And the idea here is just to have a basic contact form on the homepage for people to reach out to us. Next, let's configure the form. So go ahead and hover your mouse over the form and click on edit. And this will open up the form editor widget and it's broken down into two sections. On the left is where you can edit the form fields and on the right is where you can configure the form options. Then you even have the ability to view and manage all of the form responses here as well. And we'll get into that a little later on in the tutorial, but for now let's configure some of the basic form settings. So I'm actually going to leave all of the default form field settings in place, so we'll leave those alone for now. But I will update the form options, starting with the short message that will display when the form is submitted. By default, they have this thanks for your submission message, but I recommend tailoring this so it's something a little more personal. So for this example, I'm going to have it say, thanks for reaching out, we'll be in touch soon. And again, this will show up whenever someone fills out the form and submits their information. Next, you have the ability to receive an email anytime someone submits a message. And I recommend filling this out because if you're running a business, it allows you to stay up to date with customer inquiries and you could strike when the iron's hot, so to speak. So enter your email address here. And then below that are some additional form options, but please note that these are only available for paid plans. So if you're using the free version of Strikingly, you need to upgrade your plan in order to have access to these features. And again, if you do plan to upgrade, I would greatly appreciate it if you would use my affiliate link located at blogwithbin.com strikingly, and you can access the link in the video description below. And as always, thank you for your support. Okay, so that's going to do it for these form settings. Again, we're going to revisit this form when we get to the email marketing section of the tutorial, but for now, let's go ahead and save our changes by clicking the save button. 
And next, this section gives you the ability to display your address and contact information. This makes sense if you have a brick and mortar business. However, if you're completely digital, I'll show you how to remove this in a second. But for this example, I'm creating a website for a yoga studio, so it will obviously have a physical address. So to update the contact info, hover your mouse over the placeholder contact info and click edit. Then it's pretty straightforward from here within the fields provided, update the address, hours, phone, and email address, and then click the Save button to save your changes. Then you'll also have the ability to add a map. If you look below the form, there's an Add Map button, and clicking on this will add a Google Map using the address that you used within the contact information. Again, you only want to use this if you have an actual physical location for your business. If you're running your business out of your home, I doubt that you want the entire world to know where you live. So having this map is completely optional. And if I'm being completely honest, I kind of like the section without the map, so I'll remove it by clicking the undo button in the upper left corner of the toolbar. And there we go, looks great. Then next, I wanna change the background image of this section. So click the background button in the upper right corner of the section and then I'll be uploading an image of my own, so I'll click the Upload Image button. And then browse your computer. And find the image that you want to use. And perfect. All right, so click the Save button to save your changes. And then one thing I recommend doing every time you create a form is to test that form to ensure that the submissions are making it through your lead flow funnel. And we'll definitely do that during the email marketing section of the video a little later on, but I just wanted to bring that up so that you make testing your web forms a part of your process as you're creating your site. But again, we're gonna do that in just a few moments. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna do here is change the section title. It currently says book, but I'm not going to use this contact form as a booking form because we're actually gonna create a booking page a little later on in the video. So we'll rename this section title, Contact Us. And to do that, within your toolbar on the left-hand side of the screen, click the gear icon next to the book section, and then select Rename and enter the new title of the section. And again, I'm changing this to Contact Us. And then click the green check mark to save it. And our section and primary nav menu item has been updated as well. Nice work. All right, moving on to the footer. Now by default, this template's footer has a few text sections with some social media icons and then some copyright text at the bottom. However, just like our other sections, the footer has a layout and color swatch in the upper right corner, allowing you to change the layout and color of the footer. Now I'm keeping the color as is, but if you click the layout button, you'll get to see the other layout options there are for the footer. The first layout option gives you three areas of text and some social icons. The next layout option gives you the ability to add a logo within the footer, and it's kind of hard to see, but it's there towards the left. Next, it removes the text boxes and centers the social icons and copyright text. And finally, it spreads out the social icons and copyright text. Then I actually like this layout of the footer, so I'm going to leave it in place. And then as I mentioned earlier, you could change the background color of your footer by clicking this color swatch. But again, I like this gray color, so I'm going to leave it as is. Next, I recommend updating the footer copyright text. You can edit it just like all of the other text sections on the homepage, so all you're gonna do is type what you want it to say. Now, if you're gonna add copyright info, I recommend adding an actual copyright symbol, and all you have to do is copy and paste one from anywhere on the web. I'm using this one, and I've linked to this actual web page in the video description below so that you can get this copyright symbol if you need it. But once you have your copyright symbol back at the footer, I'll paste it in the text field and then have it say 2022, which is the current year, and then I'll add the name of the business. And you can remove the proudly built with strikingly text if you want, but I'm gonna leave that for now. Next are the social icons, and these are to help drive traffic to your social channels. 
So to edit them and add more, click on them. And this will open the social icon widget where we can configure the URLs that they point to and add more of them if we'd like. So as a placeholder, they're using the Facebook and Instagram strikingly URLs, but you'll obviously want to change these to your own social networks. So you can either click the trash can icon to remove them completely, or you can click the pencil icon and edit the URLs. And that's what I'm going to do. And for this example, I'm adding the blog within Facebook and Instagram URLs. But again, this is where you'd add your website or your business's social profile URLs. Then if you have more social networks, simply click add new and enter the URL. So I'm going to add Twitter. And again, I'm using my blog within Twitter URL for this example. You can also change the order of how the icons are displayed by dragging and dropping them like so. Again, giving you some creative freedom in regards to how these look on your site. Then you also have the option of displaying these social icons in your primary nav. And keeping this box checked ensures that the social icons display in your primary nav at the top of the screen, if you've enabled that feature. All right, so that's going to do it for the social icons. So go ahead and click the Save button. And you should see that the newly added Twitter URL is now displaying as a Twitter icon in the footer. And that's going to do it for the footer. Nice work. And let's check out our site so far. So far so good. The site's really starting to come together. The different sections of content and overall design look really professional. I love this template. Okay, moving on. Next, let's configure the primary navigation menu. Next, it's time to configure the primary navigation menu located at the top of the home page. This has the ability to house your logo, but it also has all of your menu items and a button that can direct traffic to anywhere you'd like. And as you've heard me say before, one of the many reasons why I'm starting to create videos about Strikingly is their ease of use and how they take something that would usually take a ton of technical know-how and coding and turn it into a simple task that can be done with a few clicks of the mouse. So with that being said, let's configure the primary nav. So by default, this template starts you off with a dark, solid colored primary nav, or as they refer to as the header, but you have a handful of options when it comes to the style of this header. So to check them out, click styles in the upper left corner of your toolbar. Then from here, open the header and navigation tab. And this will give you access to all of the editing options for your navigation menu, starting with the layout. So if we open the layout tab, It'll show you all the different types of layouts that you could use. And as you'll see in a few moments, each layout can drastically change the look and feel of your entire site. So go ahead and click on them to check them out. And just FYI, if you click on one of them, you have to reopen the layout tab to select the other version of the layout. But again, this is so cool because you're essentially making a huge change that would normally take a considerable amount of time and effort to implement if you're using other blogging platforms out there. But these layout options allow you to change the nav with a click of the mouse. Plus, we're using the free plan, and giving this type of freedom with the free version of their platform is not typical when using other site builders. That's just another reason why I am loving Strikingly. Okay, so I'm going to set it back to the default layout by clicking the undo button a few times in the upper left corner of the screen. And that'll get us back to the darker colored header. There we go. Then one thing that I noticed as I undid these changes was that the contact us menu item disappeared. And if that happens to you as well, don't freak out. All you have to do is refresh the page as if you're refreshing the browser and it should go back to normal. I'm not sure why it does that, but it's an easy fix. Just refresh the page, which I'll do in a few seconds after we set the color of the header. Okay, so next you can change the color of the nav if you open the color tab and this will give you all of the options available. Now it's currently showing the custom color options where you can pretty much configure the colors to be whatever you want. But if you click the back to presets link, you'll have access to some preset displays for various types of designs for your header. And as you can see, there's transparent, white minimal, light minimal, Accent dark, accent light, black minimal, and then custom right below that. 
Now I actually like the black minimal, which is what I have selected right now. So I'll just click the done button to save these changes. And it looks great. Now, if you recall, I still need to refresh the page to fix this little spacing issue with our menu items. So let me do that really quick. And boom, problem solved. The contact us menu item is back and everything looks normal. All right, so since I refreshed the page, it's taken me away from the header and navigation styles section of the toolbar. So let's reopen the styles and then reopen the header and navigation tab. And then next we have the width, padding, and font size. Feel free to test these out to see if there's anything that you like. Sometimes these small changes can have a huge impact on how your site looks. Again, it really comes down to personal preference, but I'm actually gonna undo these changes and go back to the default settings. So I'll click the undo button a few times to reset them. Next we have the sticky nav and it's currently on. And all this means is that when the user scrolls on the page, the navigation menu will stay sticky at the top of the screen. Then when we turn it off, as the user scrolls, the nav disappears as if it's attached to the home page section. So when they scroll, they can't see the nav. I actually like having the nav viewable at all times, so I'm gonna set it back to sticky. Finally, we have the social icons, and turning this on will display the same social icons that we just configured in the footer. This actually looks pretty good now, but due to the additional pages we're gonna be creating a little later on in the video, having these social icons will cause our menu to be extremely crowded. So for this example, I'm actually going to turn these off, but feel free to test different header and navigation layouts if you'd like to have the social icons display in your primary nav. Okay, moving on to the button. This particular template gives you the option of adding a button to your nav, which is an amazing feature that can be leveraged to drive traffic to key parts of your website. For example, we're going to create a sign up for class button that will link to a booking page where customers can sign up for yoga class. This is an amazing lead generation tool that can increase your conversion rate regardless of the industry or niche your business is in. So let's add our button to the nav. Okay, first things first, click on where it says add button. And from here, it will open the button widget. This is exactly like the button we configured a little earlier on in the home section. It's split between content and design. And I'm actually going to leave the design as is. And right now I'm only concerned with the content of the button. So in the text field, type your call to action. Like I said, this is going to entice people to reserve a yoga class. So in the text field, I'll type sign up for class. Next is the link URL, and this button will be linking to a separate booking page that we still need to create. So make sure you have web selected, and then we'll add the actual link URL after we create the page a little later on. Then since the booking page we're going to create will be an internal link, meaning it will link the user to another page within our website, we'll want the button to open that link in the same tab. So I highly recommend unchecking this box next to where it says open a new tab. It's just best practice to have your own site's links open in the same tab. However, if you are linking to an outside website, then I recommend keeping this box checked. Okay, so that's gonna do it for the button right now. So go ahead and click the save button. And we now have two buttons ready to drive traffic to our booking page, which we will create in a few short minutes. All right, next you have the ability to add a logo and some text towards the left-hand side of the primary nav. Now we already added a logo on the home page, so I won't be adding a logo here for this example. However, I obviously wanna update this text that says Kowo, and it's still using that teal color. So updating this text is just like any other text change you'd make within the editor. Just place your cursor on it and start typing. And like I said, I obviously wanna change the color of the teal text. So again, highlight that text that you wanna edit and click the color swatch and choose the new color. Super simple. Okay, finally you can add a logo by clicking add logo and the steps are just like the other times we added an image. But like I said, since I already have the logo front and center on the homepage, I'm not gonna add the logo on the primary nav. But feel free to test it out to see what works best for you. All right, our primary navigation menu is all set. Nice work, looks great. 
Now keep in mind, if you didn't add a logo to your primary nav and you're still seeing that add logo text, that's only viewable in the back end of your site. And it won't be viewable once you publish your site and once it's live. Just wanted to point that out. All right, moving on. Next, let's set up your email marketing funnel and create an opt-in form. And let me get back to the site design really quick. So click the back to site design button in the upper left corner of the screen. All right, next, let's set up your email marketing funnel. So now it's time to build your following and grow your email list with Strikingly's newsletter system. This is an amazing free service that lets you collect email addresses and send up to 100 emails per month to your audience. This is a great way to build a relationship with your audience as well as market to them and potentially earn a passive income as well. And the way we'll accomplish this is by adding and configuring an email opt-in form on your site. Now, we already have one of those forms on the homepage, which is our contact form, but you can add more throughout your entire site. Then once your site's visitors fill out that opt-in form, their information will be stored in the audience section of your Strikingly account. You'll then be able to manually reply to each person who fills out the form, or you can send out newsletters to your entire list with Strikingly's newsletter system. This is by far a huge advantage when it comes to using Strikingly because you normally have to pay a monthly fee for email marketing software. However, with your free plan, you could store email addresses in your account and send up to 100 emails per month to your audience. Not bad for a free plan. So with that being said, let's set up your email opt-in form. Okay, first things first, let's go to our form. So click the Contact Us section in your toolbar. Then the first thing I recommend doing is configuring the email notification settings. So within your toolbar, click Settings. And then select Email Notifications. And from here, you'll want to review and edit your sender profile if needed. And your sender profile is what people will see in the form field of all emails sent by your site. So update the form name and email to ensure that it's aligned with your website. For this example, I'm having the form name be the title of my site, Balboa Yoga. And then the from email is my blog with Ben email. But you'd obviously want to update that to your own email. Then click the update button to save your changes. And if you added a new email address here, you'll be asked to verify it, just FYI. Now, it strikingly states that email addresses from free services like Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail, etc. are more likely to be marked as spam or junk. And strikingly recommends using a custom domain to overcome that. However, in order to use a custom domain and email address, you'd need to upgrade your account. And if you plan on upgrading, I would greatly appreciate it if you would use my affiliate link, which is blogwithbin.com forward slash strikingly, and you can access this link in the show notes below the video. But if you're using the free Strikingly plan and a free email service, try sending yourself a test email to see where it lands. I tested my Gmail address here and it actually went to my main inbox. So for one-on-one -on -one emails, you may be okay. All right, next, you'll need to add a physical address in order to comply with anti-spam regulations. A physical address is required for all email campaigns. And this is where it can get tricky because you definitely don't want to use your home address here because the address will be viewable on all of the emails that you send out to your audience. But if you live in the United States, the Postal Service offers a no-fee P.O. Box service to customers who do not receive any form or carrier delivery, meaning no large packages. Customers can apply for the no-fee P.O. Box service by completing an application and providing identification to a Postal Service employee. And you can find more information about that on the U.S. Postal Service website, which I will link to in the video description below. However, if you have the budget for a paid mailbox, that's what I recommend. I purchased the mailbox at my local UPS store, and that's what I use for all of my blogs and businesses. Again, I know we're keeping everything free here, but just letting you know, that's what I use and recommend. Okay, once you have your address all squared away, click the Add a New Physical Address link, and fill out the fields, and be sure to click the Save button to save your changes. Then from the drop-down, select your address and click the Update button. And now your email notifications are set and ready to go. Next, let's configure the email opt-in form. 
So click the Back to Site Design button in the upper left corner of your toolbar. And then hover your mouse over the form and click Edit. And this will bring up the form widget where you can edit the form fields, the form options, and then the advanced options. But remember, the advanced options are only for paid plans. Now, we configured this form previously during the Edit Homepage section of the tutorial, so I'm going to leave all of the settings in place for this form. And then one thing I recommend doing every time you create a form is to test that form to ensure that the form submissions are making it through your lead flow funnel. So one quick way to test this form is to fill it out in the preview environment. And this is going to give us a great opportunity to see how the preview environment behaves. So in the bottom left corner of your toolbar, you have the ability to preview your site before publishing your changes. So go ahead and click preview site. And this will open up the preview environment. And you'll be able to tell in the upper left corner of the screen, it'll say strikingly site preview. Again, I always recommend previewing your work before you publish it to ensure that everything looks right and is behaving correctly. And so far, our site is really starting to come together. Then, like I said, you'll want to test your forms to ensure that the leads are making it through. So let's fill this form out really quick. And then submit our information. And look at that, we get our confirmation message. Then back at the editor, you can monitor all of your form submissions within the audience section of your Strikingly account. So in the upper left corner of the toolbar, click on audience. And this will take you to your audience list where all of your form submissions will be stored. And as you can see, our test form submission has made it through and we are building our email list. Additionally, if you configured your form to send a notification to your email address every time someone submits their information, you'll see that Strikingly will email you and notify you that someone has filled out your form. This can come in handy if you're trying to drum up business and generate leads. Being quickly notified when someone fills out your form gives you the opportunity to strike when the iron is hot. Next, as I mentioned earlier, your free Strikingly plan comes with the newsletter system. This allows you to send up 100 emails per month, and you can reply manually one by one to each submission by clicking the reply button next to the submission within the audience list. Or you can send a newsletter to the entire list all at once. And the way to do that is in the upper right corner, click on the More Options dropdown, and then select Send a Newsletter. And this will open the Strikingly Email Template Builder. When I first saw this, I was honestly blown away because typically something like this, you have to pay for. Like if you subscribe to a professional email marketing service, something like this could cost you anywhere from $20 to $40 per month. But with this free Strikingly newsletter plan, you have access to their email template builder where you can build some pretty sophisticated emails that look professional, ultimately helping you build a relationship with your audience, grow your email list, and market to them, potentially earning a passive income as well. Okay, so with that being said, let's go over the template builder. So the email template builder is broken down into two sections. On the left is where you configure the name, subject, sender profile it's coming from, and the recipients that it's gonna go to. Then on the right is where you can craft your email newsletter with their email template. It's pretty sophisticated for a free builder too. They start you off with some placeholder content, but you can easily change the images, update the text, add new images, add buttons, etc. This is a great opportunity to promote your upcoming blog posts, drive traffic to affiliate offers if you're an affiliate marketer, you can sell products with your emails, and much, much more. Having access to this type of email marketing software for free is literally unheard of, and remember, you could send up to 100 emails per month with your free plan. This is a great way to get started with email marketing and grow your audience. Then once you've created your email, in the bottom left corner is where you can send a test email, save it as a draft, or send it to your email list right away. I recommend always sending a test email to yourself before you send it out to your audience. This ensures that everything looks professional and works properly when it gets to an email inbox. All right, so that's gonna do it for the email marketing section of the tutorial. So I'm gonna exit out of here really quick. Then let's head back to our editor. So in the upper left corner of the toolbar, click on Back to Site Design. 
And then I want to preview this again really quick to show you some other features in the preview environment. So in the bottom left corner of the toolbar, click Preview Site. And then within the primary nav, go ahead and click on the Contact Us menu item. And this will scroll the user down all the way to the form, hopefully enticing them to fill it out. Then another cool feature of the preview environment is that you can preview what your site will look like on different devices. If you look in the upper right corner of the preview environment, you'll see that you have the option to preview on the desktop, tablet, and mobile device. Simply clicking either one of those icons will show you what your site will look like on that particular device. And if we click on the tablet, strikingly gives you an actual tablet preview environment. This is extremely helpful because it allows you to see not only what things will look like on different devices, but it lets you address any issues that you may come across whenever your content is viewed on mobile devices. And the same thing goes for the mobile phone. Simply click on that icon in the upper right corner and strikingly gives you an actual preview mobile phone environment. And what do you know, we found our first issue in the preview environment. For some reason, the mobile version of the site text in the header is black instead of white. Not sure why that is, but we'll definitely want to fix that. Again, this is a prime example of why it's important to always preview your work as you're making changes to your site. And then scrolling through the rest of the mobile preview, the site looks perfect. All we need to fix is that text in the header. So let's head back to the Strikingly Editor, and you can actually edit the mobile version in real time. So check this out. We're currently editing the desktop version of the site, but if you click the mobile phone icon in the bottom left corner of your toolbar, you could switch to the mobile version and edit the mobile template of your site. This is so cool. And we wanna change the color of the text, so highlight it, and then open the color picker, and I'll change it to white. Boom, look at that, back to normal. All right, and I'm gonna switch back to the desktop version again really quick. So I'll select that desktop icon. And then once again, let's preview our site. So click preview site in the bottom left corner of your toolbar. And then our desktop header looks good. The text is white and that brown color. And then let's check out the tablet. So on the upper right corner of the preview environment, select that tablet icon and the header looks good. And then finally, let's check out the mobile version. So we'll click the mobile icon. Nice, the text color has been updated and it's mirroring the rest of our site's design. Again, this is why we preview our work as we're building our site. But I gotta say, these templates are responsive out of the box and ready to be viewed on desktop and mobile devices, saving you a ton of time in the design process and saving you a bunch of headaches trying to ensure that everything looks right across all three device types. Just another reason why I love these strikingly templates. Okay, so our homepage is pretty much complete. So with that being said, let's move on and create additional pages for our website. In this section of the tutorial, we're going to create and add three additional pages to our website. Specifically, we'll be adding a meet the staff page, a booking page to let people sign up for class, and an online store. This will open up your site to new possibilities and drive traffic to key parts of your site to help increase leads, conversions, and revenue. So with that being said, let's add our first page. So within your web editor toolbar on the left-hand side of the screen, click Add Another Page. And this will give you the ability to create new and additional pages for your site. Free users can add up to five pages per site, but if you'd like to add more than five pages, you'll need to upgrade to a pro plan in order to unlock the additional pages. And if you plan to upgrade, I would greatly appreciate it if you would use my affiliate link to do so within the video description below. All right, so for this example, we're adding three additional pages. So click the continue and add up to five pages button. And one thing I wanna point out is that when you add new pages, strikingly removes the additional homepage sections from your nav. I'm not sure why that happens, but it's an easy fix. So before we address our new page, let's fix the primary nav. 
So to add the menu items back on the left hand side of the screen in your toolbar, under the sections, click the gear icon next to each section that you want to be listed within your primary nav. So I want to re-add the about section, so let me open that gear. And then recheck the box next to where it says show and navigation. And as you can see, it's been re-added to the primary nav. Then I'm going to do the same thing for the Explore and Contact Us sections. So click the gear icons and then check the box next to where it says Show and Navigation. Perfect. Okay, let's create our new page. So what we're gonna do is create a Meet the Staff page that will actually list out all of the Yoga Balboa staff members and teachers and display a little bio next to each picture. Now, more than likely, you're not creating a website for a yoga studio, so you probably won't be creating a page like this. Nevertheless, this will be a good intro to how to create new pages and add different sections of content to your pages. So with that being said, let's create the page. So on the left-hand side of the screen in your toolbar, this time click on where it says manage and it will be above the pages section and we'll have a little gear icon next to it and this is where you'll manage all of your website's pages it's also where you can add a new page so go ahead and click the add new page button there and next you'll be prompted to name the page and since this will be our staff page I'm going to title this meet the staff then click the green check mark to save it and it has been added to our primary nav. Next, let's add content to the page. So go ahead and visit the page by clicking either the Meet the Staff page section in your toolbar or in the primary nav, and this will bring you to the new page. And it will be completely blank, but you can add a new section, which is what we're going to do now. So to add content to this page, click back to Site Design in the upper left corner of your toolbar, Then click the Add New Section button, and this will open the menu of all the different sections you can add to your site. This is yet another reason why I love Strikingly, because with other website building platforms, something like this would either take a bunch of coding and dev work, or you would need multiple plugins to accomplish a change like this. But with the Add Feature section, you can literally add anything from a simple online store, to web forms, to even a blog. And for this particular page, I'm going to use the Featured List section. So go ahead and find that and click on the one you want to use. And check that out. We now have a Featured List that we can edit and configure to be the Meet the Staff page. So first things first, I want to change the title. So highlight the text and change it to whatever you want it to say. And again, I'm going to change this to say Meet the Staff then I want to make this title consistent with the rest of my site's title. So I'm going to make the text 48 pixels, and you can edit the actual pixel size towards the bottom of this drop-down list. Then click OK to set it. And there we go. Then I also want to make this text bold, so I'll click the B icon in the toolbar, and as you can see, the title is now bold and looks like the rest of the titles on the site. Next, let's update this subtitle. So I'll change this to say, Get to Know the Teachers at Balboa Yoga. And now it's time to create our featured list, which will serve as our teacher bios. So let me show you how I'm going to do this. And as I said earlier, this page is going to list out the teachers of the yoga studio and we'll have a picture of each teacher with a little bio next to it. So we'll want to swap out these placeholder images with pictures of our teachers. And it's just like all of the other images. You'll hover your mouse over it and click edit. And this will open up the image widget. Then we're replacing this image, so click replace. And I'm going to be uploading an image from my computer, so I'll click browse your computer and find the image I want to use. And for the sake of time, I'm skipping adding the alt text of this image, but remember, you'll want to add the alt text for all of your images. It's a best practice for improving your SEO. Next, I'm going to update the text on the right. This will serve as the teacher bios, and I'm just going to put their first names in that title field, 
And then below that is where you can add a little bio or quote, but I'm just leaving the placeholder text here. And there we go, we have our first bio. Then just follow the same steps for the next bio. We'll edit the image and then replace it and add an image from my computer. And then I'll add the first name and there we go. Then let's say I need to add additional bios. Well, check this out. If you click the add item button, it will automatically create a duplicate of the bio that we just created. Super cool and saves us a ton of time. Then instead of making you sit through me adding these additional bios, let's fast forward really quick. And we now have our meet the staff page. But looking at it now as the full page, there's one thing I wanna do. I'm gonna change the name font to be a little larger. So let's highlight it and change the font to an H3 heading. So from that drop down menu, select heading three. And then I'm gonna do this for the remaining bios really quick. And there we go, looks much better in my opinion. Okay, now that we have our page, let me show you how you can add drop down menus to your primary nav. This isn't required, but it might make sense for your site to have drop down menus in the nav if you have additional pages. This also gives your audience an easy way to find and get to those additional pages of content. So to add a drop down menu within your toolbar, click on manage, And under the advanced section, click add drop down menu. And this will essentially create a new menu item where you'll be prompted to name it. And for this example, I'm going to title this drop down teachers. And then click the green check mark to save it. And check this out. All you're gonna do now is drag the page that you want to live under the teacher's menu item. So for this example, I'm going to have the meet the staff page live in the drop down menu. So drag it below the teachers and place it just like so. You could tell that it's a drop down menu in your toolbar because it'll be indented and positioned slightly to the right of the initial menu item. Then if we take a closer look at our primary nav, as you can see, we have the teacher's menu item, but there's this little carrot icon on it now indicating that this is a drop-down menu. So now when your site's visitors hover their mouse over the teacher's menu item, that drop-down menu will appear and they can access the Meet the Staff page. And let's test this out really quick. So I'll head back to the editor by clicking the Back to Site Design. And then if we visit the home page and hover our mouse over the new teacher's menu item, the Meet the Staff menu item appears, and when clicked, it takes us to that particular page. Again, having a drop down menu isn't required, but it's a common practice among websites that have multiple pages. So I just wanted to show you some ways to diversify your content offering within your nav. All right, moving on next, let's create our next page, which will be our booking page. And again, this is gonna give your website visitors a way to schedule and reserve time with you and your business. So in this portion of the tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create an online booking system that will live within a separate page on your site. And if we fast forward really quick, you can see what that'll look like. So the Strikingly website builder has just released a brand new feature that will allow you to add a booking section to your website. This is essentially a complete booking system that allows your site's visitors to schedule and reserve time with you and your business. And for this particular example, we're creating a website for a yoga studio and this booking system will be used to help customers sign up and reserve a spot in a hot yoga class. So back at Strikingly, the way we're going to implement this is by creating a new page and then we'll add the booking section to that page. So just like our meet the staff page, we'll want to go to the manage section of our pages. So within your toolbar, click on manage. Then from here, click the add new page button. And then name the page and I'm going to 
name this class since it'll be used for students to reserve their spot in a hot yoga class. And then click the green check mark to save it. There we go. Then you'll notice that this has been added to our primary nav, but if you recall, I wanna link this page to the sign up for class buttons that we created a little earlier. So I'm actually gonna remove this class menu item from the primary nav. And the way to do that is to click the gear icon next to the class section within your toolbar. And then from here, uncheck the box next to where it says show and navigation. and that will remove the class menu item from the primary nav. And we'll add it to the buttons in just a bit, but next let's create our booking system. So as I previously mentioned, Strikingly just released a brand new booking section that allows you to create and manage a pretty sophisticated booking system within your website. So let's go to our new class page by clicking on the class section within the toolbar. Then from here, we need to add the new booking section. So, in the upper left corner of your toolbar, click on the Back to Site Design button, and then click the Add New Section button, and scroll until you find Bookings, and there it is. Go ahead and click on it, and we can now add events to book within our page. And we'll do that in just a sec, but first let's update the title text. So instead of book now, I'm going to have this say sign up for class. And then once again, I'll change the font size to 48 pixels. And bold the font as well. There we go. Then below that, I'm going to leave the subheading text alone, but feel free to update it if you want. Next, it's time to add our event. So click on where it says, click here to add events. And this will bring you to your events management page. This is where you can create, edit, and manage your scheduled events and bookings. This is a great tool if you have a service, course, class, etc. And this is gonna allow your clients and customers to reserve and book time with you and your business. And as I mentioned earlier, your free strikingly plan lets you create one event for your clients to book. And for this example, I'm using this as a way for clients to sign up for a hot yoga class and reserve their spot in class. They won't be able to pay for the class here, but it will allow the yoga studio to know how many people are coming to class and then they could set up a payment via email or have the customer pay whenever they arrive to the business. All right, with that being said, let's set up our event. So go ahead and click the add event type button in the upper left corner of the screen. And this will bring you to the event creator where the first thing you'll do is add the event name and description. So this is gonna be a hot yoga class. Then for the description, I'll include some info about the class along with the price. Next, you have the ability to configure the capacity of the event. By default, it's set to unlimited, but you can change it to one-on-one -on -one or set it to a specific amount. For this example, I'm gonna set it to 20 people per time slot. So we'll uncheck the box next to unlimited and then enter the number of attendees. And I'm gonna set this to 20. Again, this is saying that we will allow 20 people per time slot for our hot yoga class. Below that, you can add the location of the event. I'm just putting San Diego, California, but you can add a specific address or location if you'd like. Next, you can configure the duration of your event and set the time slots as well. And for this example, I'm having the hot yoga class be 30 minutes long, and it'll run Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. So what this is saying is that our customers will be able to reserve a spot in class for 30 minutes during 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. You can also set fixed date overrides if you have specific times you are or aren't available. But again, for this example, I'm leaving all these time slots as is. Okay, the last thing I wanna do is add an image for the event. This will show up on our page next to the booking widget and can help engage the user and get them to book a spot in class. So to add an image, click upload image. And then I'm adding an image from my computer, so I'll click browse your computer and find the image I wanna use. And then let it upload. And there we go, our event is ready to go. 
So go ahead and click the Save button. And our event has been created. And let's check it out really quick. So click the Back to Site Design button in the upper left corner of the screen. And check that out. We now have a professional looking booking widget that will give your customers the ability to schedule and book time with you and your business. Okay, the next thing I want to do is add this page URL to our buttons. And if you recall, we created the buttons to give our site's visitors a way to sign up for yoga class. And this page is how they'll do that. So we'll want to add the URL of this page to our buttons. But in order to do that, the first thing we'll want to do is get the URL of this new page we just created. So go ahead and click on where it says manage. Then click the gear icon next to the class section within the toolbar. And at the top of that little menu will be the URL of the page. So go ahead and copy this by highlighting it. And I'm on a Mac so I'm pressing Command C on my keyboard to copy it. Next, we'll want to paste this URL to our buttons. So let's open up our first button in the primary nav by hovering your mouse over it and click on where it says Edit. Then from here, within the content section of the button widget, next to where it says Link, make sure you have Web selected. Then in the Link field, place your cursor there and paste the URL we just copied. And again, since I'm using a Mac, I'll be pressing Command P on my keyboard to paste it. Then be sure to add the HTTPS prefix at the beginning of the URL. So just go to the very beginning of the link URL and add HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash. This will ensure that your link is correct and secure. Then since we're linking to an internal link, meaning the link will direct traffic to another page within our website, we'll want to keep the Open and New Tab box unchecked. This will ensure that the link opens in the same tab when clicked. This is a best practice and will create a good user experience. And then we're going to be reusing this link in our next button, so go ahead and highlight this link that we just pasted and copy it. Again, I'm on a Mac, so I'm pressing Command C on my keyboard and we're highlighting and copying this link because it includes the HTTPS prefix. That way you don't have to re-add it whenever we add the link to our next button. So this way you're copying the full URL. All right, our button is ready to go, so go ahead and click the Save button. And we have our first button. Next, let's do the same thing for the button on the home page. So go ahead and visit the home page and open the button settings. And again, make sure you have web selected and paste the link there in that field. Then click the save button. And our buttons are good to go and we'll now direct traffic to our newly created class page, giving people a way to reserve a spot in our hot yoga class. And we'll test out the functionality of these buttons in a few minutes, but next, let's create another revenue stream and add an online store. Next, we're going to create an online store and give you a way to add another revenue stream to your website and business. And if we fast forward really quick, you can get a better idea of what that will look like. So one of the many reasons why I've been using Strikingly more and more is that they streamline the entire e-commerce process so that you can build and manage an online store all from your Strikingly site. You don't need a third-party plugin or an online store software. As you can see, you can create a professional-looking storefront within your Strikingly site, and even if you're starting with a free website like we are in this video, you could still sell one product from your site. This is yet another way to create additional revenue streams and sell products to your audience. Also, as you'll see in a few moments, you don't need a physical product to sell. So if you don't think this is for you just because you don't have an inventory to sell, think again you could still earn money with an online store. So, with that being said, let's create your online store. Okay, so the way we're going to do this is to create a separate page and then build the store on that page. 
So first things first, let's create our new page. So within the toolbar on the left-hand side of the screen, click on Manage next to where it says Pages. Then click the Add New Page button. And the steps should be somewhat familiar by now. So we're gonna name this page. So in the field provided, I'm going to name this Store. And then click the green check mark to save and create the page. There we go. Then let's visit the new page by clicking on either the toolbar or menu item. And from here, the page will be blank, so we'll need to add our new online store section. So within the toolbar, click back to site design. And then click the add new section button. And then find the simple store section. It should be the first one listed. There we go. Then before we move on, I wanna show you a small bug I found. Now, you may not experience this, but it was a small issue that I came across while trying to change the title of this store. So if you recall on all of our other pages, we changed the title font to be 48 pixels and then we made it bold. However, when I did that on this store title, it changed the actual font style and I wasn't able to change it back for some reason. Again, this isn't a huge deal, but it does create some inconsistency throughout the site. So the workaround that I found was to remove this title altogether and re-add a separate title section. So to remove it, simply highlight the text and delete it then we're gonna add a new section. So within the toolbar on the left-hand side of the screen, click the Add New Section button. And this time, find the Title section. And there it is. Go ahead and select it. Then by default, it's added to the bottom of the page, but we'll wanna move it to the top. So within your toolbar, you can rearrange the sections by dragging and dropping them in your desired order. So I'm gonna move the new title section to the very top like so. Then this time, whenever we change what the text says, and I'll change this to shop now, and we make it bigger and bold it, and I'll set this to 48 pixels. The font stays the same and we now have consistent titles throughout our site. Then we'll obviously want to update the subtitle below it and I'll just try to type out a catchy headline here, something to entice them to make a purchase. There we go. Now one thing I want to point out is that the blank space where our original title used to be won't be viewable on our live site. So don't worry, it'll look a lot better once we officially launch the site. Just wanted to point that out. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's build our store. So go ahead and click on where it says click here to start selling. And this will bring you to your product management page. This is where you can add, delete, and manage the products that you sell in your store. Now, as you already know, we're using the free Strikingly plan, so we can only add one product to sell in our store, but if you wanna sell multiple products, then feel free to upgrade and you'll have access to all the features of the online store and you'll be able to sell multiple products. However, for this example, we're only selling one product. So to get started, click the add new product button and this will bring you to the product page. This is where you can determine the type of product you'll sell as well as all of the product and shipping details. So for starters, you'll wanna determine what type of product you're going to sell. And for this example, I'm selling a t-shirt. So I'll wanna select physical. However, if you don't have a physical product, you can sell a service like coaching, consulting, or some type of training. This is an awesome feature because you don't need to worry about shipping. Now, those are two types of products you can sell with your free account. But if you upgrade to a paid plan, you could sell digital products. This is what I personally sell on all of my sites because you don't need an inventory, there's no shipping, and they are typically pretty easy to create. This can be an ebook, PDF, video, etc. The list goes on. But in order to sell digital products, you'll need to upgrade to a paid strikingly plan. Either way, this online store is a great way to add a revenue stream to your website and open the door to passive income. Okay, so as I previously mentioned, I'm selling a t-shirt in this online store. So I'll select physical for the type of product. Then below that is where you'll enter the product and shipping details if you're selling a physical product. 
Then to the left in the toolbar are some more store configuration options like the shipping details, sales tax, etc. And we'll cover these in a few moments, but for now, let's add our product. So the first thing I'm going to do is enter the product details. So I'll fill out the name and description. And again, this is a branded t-shirt of the Yoga Studio. And for this example, I've created an image in Canva.com, but typically most t-shirt design companies will give you an image of the shirt that you can use on your site. So let's add our image by clicking where it says Upload Image. Then just follow the same steps to upload the image from your computer. And give it a second to upload. And there we go. Now, it's cut off in this little preview, but it'll look a lot better once we publish our changes. Okay, next it's time to set the price for your product and how many you have in stock. So for this example, I'm gonna price this $19.99. So enter your desired price in the price field. Then by default, it says you have an unlimited quantity of your product. This probably isn't the case, so uncheck that box and enter the number of products that you have for each size. And I'm gonna say that I have five of each size. Then to set your sizes, click the Add Option button. And from here, you can add more variations of your product, like colors, sizes, etc. So in the newly added option field, I'll add the size of each shirt. So the first will be small. Then for the next option, I'll add a medium shirt priced at $19.99. And I'll have five in stock of that as well. Then for the sake of time, I'm going to skip past me adding the large and extra large shirts, but the steps would be the exact same. You just click the Add Option button and then add the shirt size, price, and quantity. Next we have the shipping settings. And since we're shipping physical products, you'll want to keep that box checked and we'll go over the shipping details in a little bit. And below that is the item weight. This field is only needed if you've activated the buy weight shipping prices. Otherwise, you can leave it blank. The customer will not see these values. Then that box at the very bottom is where you can set this to be a pre-order item and then set the shipping date to be a specific time and date. This can come in handy if you're promoting a pre-sale campaign or something like that, but we aren't in this example, so I'm gonna leave these settings as is. Next, we have product categories and product page descriptions, but these are only for paid plans, so we'll skip this for now. And then click the Save button to push these changes live. And we have our product. From here on out, this is where you can access it if you need to make any changes to it, by the way. Next, it's time to set up our payment gateway. So within your toolbar, click on Store Settings. And then towards the top of the screen, you should see the payment gateway options. Go ahead and click on the setup payments button. And this is where you'll determine how your customers are going to pay. So the first thing you'll want to do is set the store currency. I'm in the United States, so I'm keeping this as the US dollar, but you could set the type of currency you'll accept in your store by clicking this drop down and setting the store currency. Next, it's time to select your payment gateway. And as you can see, you have a few options. The most popular is Stripe, and I'll link to this in the video description below, but it's free to set up and will give your customers the ability to use actual credit cards when making a purchase. Now, I'm not going to go through the Stripe sign-up process, but they're free to get started, but they will take a cut of each purchase. That's pretty much typical for all payment gateways, just FYI. But either way, I use Stripe for my digital products, and they make payments, refunds, and customer service super easy to manage and handle. Another option is to use PayPal Business. This is also free to get started, but the only downside to this is that your customer has to have a PayPal account in order to use it. More than likely they do, so check out PayPal Business if you want to use this for your payment gateway. Again, I'll link to this in the video description below. Okay, back at Strikingly, for this example, I'm using PayPal. So it's currently disabled, but if we click on this drop down, It'll open up some more options where we can activate this payment gateway by clicking the Connect to PayPal button. Then it'll walk you through the process of signing into PayPal and authorizing the connection. Again, you'll need a business PayPal account in order to do this. So let me log in really quick. And we'll go ahead and click the Agree and Connect button. 
and then in a few quick seconds I get this thanks for signing up notification this is basically confirming the connection to Strikingly. Then go ahead and click the go back to Strikingly button and then give it a few seconds if it doesn't change right away try refreshing the page but you should now see that PayPal has been enabled as the payment gateway and now people will be able to purchase my t-shirts on my site using PayPal. Alright next I want to go over the shipping options so go ahead and click on store within your toolbar and then click on shipping and this will take you to your store's shipping options page. Now I should point out that since we are simple store sellers we can set up a flat shipping rate to apply to orders during checkout. Pro users, on the other hand, can set up the flat shipping rate for different regions. And as you can see, by default, the shipping rate is set to free worldwide, but you can set it to a flat rate here if you'd like. Shipping rates can get tricky and expensive, so I recommend you check out Strikingly's in-depth article that you can access by clicking on this View Tutorials link. This article walks you through some of the specifics of how to set your shipping costs if you're going to be shipping physical products to your customers. They also have a great customer support team that can help you sort through the shipping options if you ever get stuck. One workaround is that you can include the shipping costs within the price of your product. So just calculate what the average shipping costs would be for your customers and then add that to the price of the t-shirt. This will increase the total cost for the customer, but you'll essentially have the customer pay for your shipping costs when they purchase the product. Just a thought. Okay, moving on to taxes. So within your toolbar on the left-hand side of the screen, click on taxes, and this will bring you to your sales tax management page. Now, you'll need to upgrade to a pro plan in order to set a flat tax rate to apply to all of your store's orders. However, if you need to set a sales tax, please consult a tax professional to comply with all applicable tax laws. I also recommend checking out Strikingly's in-depth article on sales tax that you get access here by clicking on this link. This is another great resource that can help you sort through the ins and outs of setting sales tax for your products. And as always, it's highly recommended that you work with a tax professional to ensure that you're complying with all applicable tax laws. Finally, let's go over the store settings really quick. So go ahead and click on store settings within your toolbar. And this is where you can configure the settings of your store. Now, since we're using the free plan, we'll only have access to the email notifications and page redirection after checkout. But again, if you upgrade to a pro plan, you'll have access to a lot more features that can help you enhance your online store. And once again, if you plan to upgrade, I would greatly appreciate it if you would use my affiliate link that you could find in the video description below. Okay, so that's gonna do it for our store. Let's go back to the site design and check out the actual online storefront. So within your toolbar in the upper left corner, click the back to site design button. And then let's visit our store by clicking the store menu item in the primary nav. And it looks amazing. Now keep in mind, that this add title space won't be viewable on our live site when we publish this. I know it looks a little odd at the moment, but it'll look much better once we view this as a live site. Okay, now that your store is up and people start making purchases, let me show you how to track and manage your orders. So within your toolbar, click on store. Then open the orders tab. And once sales start coming in, this is where you can review order details and complete the orders. It's obviously blank at the moment, but when a customer buys something from your online store, it appears as pending order in the dashboard. Both you and your customer will get an email notification with the details of the newly placed order. Then to process the order, click on pending order in your simple store order panel and click complete. Again, this store is just a demo, so I can't show you how to process orders in this tutorial. However, Strikingly has another great article that you can access here in the upper right corner of your screen by clicking on this link, and it'll walk you through the order process. This tells you everything you need to know in order to track, complete, and even refund orders if needed. All right, there's one final thing I wanna to add to our online store, so let's go back to the site design really quick by clicking the Back to Site Design button. And then what I wanna do now is I actually wanna add an opt-in form below our product listing. And if we fast forward really quick, you can see what that'll look like. So basically I'm going to add an opt-in form section to this page that will give us the ability to add an opt-in form to our online store. 
This is a great way to not only grow your email list, but you could potentially grow your sales as well by collecting email addresses and then marketing to these particular individuals. You could pitch them sales, new items, etc. And having an opt-in form on your product page is a great strategy to increase conversions. Okay, so back at our store, all we're going to do is add a new section. So within the toolbar, click the Add New Section button. And then find the Sign Up Form section. And it's added to the top of the page this time for some reason, but let me update the title before I move it. So I'll just change it to say Sign Up for Updates and then I'll make it 48 pixels. And bold the font, there we go. Then I'll have the subheading say, get coupon codes, early sales, and much more. Then I'm gonna change the background color, so click the background button in the upper right corner of the section. And then I'm gonna go with this gray color. There we go, looks good. Then let's save our changes. And then I want this form to be located below our product listing. So within your toolbar on the left, if you recall, we can rearrange the sections by dragging and dropping them in the desired order. And this rearranges the sections on the actual page and places the form at the bottom of the page. Awesome. Okay, so let's preview this really quick and take a look at how it behaves on the front end of our site. So, within the bottom left corner of your toolbar, click on Preview Site. And then when we open our store, you'll see that we now have a professional looking store that not only provides another revenue stream, but it's also collecting email addresses and giving you the ability to grow your email list and market to those individuals as well. This is a win-win and I think it looks super professional. Also keep in mind that this sign-up form will be connected to the back end of your Strikingly account. So you can send emails to individuals who submit their information to this form, all from Strikingly. All right, moving on. Next, let's add a blog to your website. In this portion of the tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to add a blog to your website. This isn't required, but it's a great way to publish fresh content and enhance your visitors' user experience and boost your site's SEO. A blog can benefit your business in numerous ways, and if you're going to have a website, I highly recommend you consider adding a blog to your digital platform. Okay, so the way we're going to accomplish this is we're going to create a separate page that will house our blog feed. Then when you publish fresh blog posts, they'll live on that separate page and feed. So first things first, let's add a new page by clicking the Manage link in your toolbar. And then click the Add New Page button. Then I'm going to title this Blog. And click the green check mark to save your changes and create the page. And there we go. Then let's visit our new page by clicking on it within the toolbar on the left-hand side of the screen. Then one thing I want to point out is the primary nav. As you can see, now that we've added an additional menu item, it's caused the nav to become crowded and it's added this caret to access the remaining menu items. This is only doing this because we're in the editor. When we view our website outside of the Strikingly editor, it'll spread out the nav and look much better. I just wanted to bring that to your attention if you were like, what the heck is going on with my menu? Okay, next, it's time to add our blog feed to this page. So click the Back to Site Design button. And then we'll add a new section, so click the Add New Section button. And this time, find the simple blog feed. And I like this one, but feel free to test each one to see which one works best for you. Then I'll update the title really quick and make it match the rest of our site. So I'm going to make it 48 pixels and I'll bold it. There we go. Next, it's time to publish a blog post. All right, 
So anytime you need to write a new blog post, you'll need to access your site settings. So within your toolbar in the upper left corner, open the settings, and then select blog. And from here is where you'll create and manage all of your blog posts. Now, before we start creating blog content, let's configure your blog settings. So go ahead and click on blog settings. And this will obviously bring you to your blog settings where you can configure certain aspects of your blog and your blog feed. So you can configure the blog post header and order here. By default, it's set to show the blog menu item in the primary nav and will show the newest to oldest posts in your blog feed. This is pretty standard, so I recommend keeping these settings in place. Next, we have the comments, RSS feed, and blog subscription. I recommend enabling all of these. In my opinion, these help to ensure a good user experience and will increase engagement within your blog posts. So I'm gonna go ahead and check all of these boxes. I should also point out that the blog subscription option adds an actual email opt-in form at the bottom of each blog post. This is yet another great way to grow your email list and expand your blog's reach. Then let's save our changes by clicking the save button at the bottom of the screen. And our blog settings have been configured. Next, let's create our blog categories. So go ahead and click on categories. And from here is where you can create the categories that your blog posts will be associated with. And if you're new to categories, a category is a group of related blog posts that are about similar subjects. And when you create a blog post, strikingly lets you add it to a particular category. For example, in this tutorial, I'm gonna create a category called Beginner's Yoga. Then when I write blog posts about yoga for beginners, I'll add them to the Beginner's Yoga category. Then what's even cooler is that I'm gonna add the categories to a blog feed menu so that when someone clicks on Beginner's Yoga, it'll take them to a page that lists all of the posts that have been added to the Beginner's Yoga category. Bottom line, whenever you create a category, it makes it easier for people to find your content. It's not only a cool feature, but it's a great user experience as well. Your readers will appreciate the convenience of not having to search through your entire blog to find relevant blog content. So to add a new category, click the add new category button. And then all you're gonna do is type out the name of the category in the field provided. So this one's gonna be beginner's yoga. and then click the green check mark to make it official and save it. And perfect, we have our first category. Then just follow the same steps to keep adding new categories. So click the add new category button and type out the category you want in that field. And my next category will be yoga stretches. And then press the green check mark again to save it. Perfect. Then for the sake of time, I'm going to fast forward through me adding the remaining categories, but this is when you'll create your additional categories for your blog posts. And there's no hard and fast rule for the number of categories you should or shouldn't have, but you wanna just make sure that all of your categories are encompassing your content strategy. Okay, now that our blog settings and categories have been configured, it's time to create a blog post. So within your toolbar, click on blog posts, and again, this is where all of your published and unpublished blog posts will be stored. And it's also where you'll access the blog editor anytime you wanna write a new blog post. So go ahead and click the write new post button. And this will bring you to the new strikingly blog editor. This is where the magic happens and it's how you'll write, create and publish your blog posts. Now, before we start creating, let me give you a quick tour of the new editor. If you look in the upper right corner of the screen, you'll see a background button. This is the exact same feature as when we were configuring the backgrounds of our different sections. Clicking this button will give you the ability to change the background of your blog headers. Next, we have the blog post title and subtitle. This is pretty straightforward and is where you'll add your title and subtitle for every blog post. Below that is the post date, followed by the category of the blog post, which we'll add in a few moments. Next is where you'll start writing your blog content, and it's also where you can add things like images and YouTube videos. And finally, we have the blog subscribe feature. This lets people sign up to your email list directly from all of your blog posts. If you recall, we enabled this in the blog settings a few minutes ago. 
Then below that are the preview and next links, some social share buttons allowing people to easily share your content with their audiences, and then a comment box letting people leave a comment and engage with your content if they choose to do so. Remember, you can turn the comments off in the blog settings if you need to at any time. Okay, so now that you know your way around the editor, let's create a blog post. So the first thing I'm gonna do is give this post a title. So where it says, add a blog post title, place your cursor there and write out your desired title. And since this website is for a yoga studio, this blog post is gonna be about five easy yoga poses for beginners. And remember, your title is going to be your blog post's headline. And crafting an attention-grabbing headline can be challenging at times, but try to keep it under 70 characters and always implement keywords within each title. Plus, your title should tell the reader what they're going to get from reading the post. And this is a great example of that because it has a straightforward title telling the audience exactly what they'll get from the content. And again, for this example, they're going to get a list of five easy yoga poses for beginners. And below the title, strikingly offers you the ability to add a subtitle. I'm not adding one in this tutorial, but if you want to, simply type it out in the field provided where it says add a subtitle. Next, you have the ability to change the background image by clicking the background button in the upper right corner of your screen. And this is the exact same as when we were changing the background image within our homepage sections. And as you can see, you can change the color, add an image, or add a video to the background. And this is a great way to grab the reader's attention and draw them into your content. And I'm actually going to add an image of my own, so I'll click Upload Image. And just a heads up, Strikingly recommends that you use background images for your blog posts that are around 1600 by 900 pixels. And one way to ensure that you're using an image with the proper dimensions is to use Canva.com. And here I've created a custom sized image that's 600 by 900 pixels, and then I'm using a stock photo that is related to the blog content. Then back at Strikingly, I'll browse my computer and find that image. And there we go, looks amazing. Now, another thing to keep in mind when selecting these background images is that they will also be used in your blog feed and social posts. For example, if we go to Twitter, you can see what this post will look like when it's shared on the social media channels. It looks great, but keep in mind when you're choosing an image to use, this image is a big reason as to whether or not someone will click on the post and visit your blog. So try to use images that are professional and are related to the content of your blog post. Okay, back to the editor. One thing I want to point out about this header image is that you can add an overlay to it to help the text stand out. So within the background widget, hover your mouse over these text options and you can see what they look like. This isn't required, but it can help your title stand out against the header background image. Okay, I like that. So let's save this background image really quick. So click the save button. Next, let's start adding content to the post. So where it says start writing here, place your cursor there and start writing. Now for the sake of time, I'm just typing some random content here, but this is where you would introduce the concept of your post or maybe have a quick story to draw the reader in. But whatever you do, be sure to use keywords that you're trying to rank for in the first few paragraphs. This will help optimize your post for the search engines, and either way, it's a good idea to have some sort of intro before you dive into the rest of the post content. Then I'm just gonna copy this content and paste it, but again, you'd probably wanna write a couple paragraphs for your intro. Next, let's add a heading. Headings are a great way to break up your content and allow your audience to easily skim and consume your blog post. Plus, they're good for SEO because the search engine bots will use the headings to understand what the post is about when crawling your site. So it's always a good idea to use headings when creating blog content. And since this post is going to be about five easy yoga poses for beginners, we'll want to use headings to introduce each yoga pose. So to create a heading, simply type what you want the heading to be. And this particular heading is going to introduce the child's pose. Then to create the heading, we'll need to change the size of the font using the editing toolbar. So highlight the text. And then if you click the normal text dropdown, you'll see the different sizes of headings that you can use you have H1 all the way to H5. 
and it's best practice to use heading two for all of your headings within your blog post content. So I'll go ahead and select that one. Then I also recommend that you bold the heading. This is a personal preference, but it helps the heading stand out within your content. So click the B within the editing toolbar to bold the font. And we have our first heading, looks great. Next, I wanna add some media. So the Strikingly Editor gives you the ability to add images, videos, and a lot more within your blog content. This can help increase user engagement and keep people on your site longer, which are all positive metrics for SEO. Okay, so for this example, I'm going to add an image. So I'll click Enter on my keyboard to add more content, and then click the plus icon, And from here, you'll have the ability to add different elements that you can include within your blog post content. And your strikingly free plan allows you to add images, videos, buttons, and a separator within your content. However, if you upgrade to the pro plan, you're able to use the HTML element. And what this does is it allows you to embed code within your blog content. This is a bit more advanced, but it does give you a lot more flexibility in terms of the different types of media that you could add to your post. However, for this example, we're going to be embedding images, and the free plan gives us everything that we need for this post. So go ahead and select image, then hover your mouse over the new image block and click edit. And I'm uploading a new image. So from the pop-up, select upload, and find the image you wanna use. I'm gonna be browsing my computer And there we go, we'll let it upload. And check that out, we now have an image within our blog content, looks great. Then remember, every time you add an image to your site, it's recommended that you add the alt text as well. This allows the search engines to know what your image is about. So hover your mouse over the image and click edit. Then select add alt text. And within the field provided there, type out what you want the alt text to be. And remember, try to be as descriptive as possible and use keywords. There we go, then click the save button. Perfect. Then I'll add some dummy text below the image, but again, this is where you'll start writing and adding more blog content. Then instead of making you sit through me adding all the other sections within the post, I'm gonna fast forward really quick. And as you can see, I've added the remaining sections that include additional headings, images, and text. I love it. Next, I wanna show you how to create a hyperlink. This is a great way to link out to different web pages and content, and it's a best practice among bloggers. So all we're basically doing is converting selected text to a link commonly referred to as a hyperlink. And all this means is that the text will be clickable and will link to a desired web page or blog post. So all you're gonna do is highlight the text that you wanna hyperlink. And I recommend changing the color of the font so that it stands out even more from the rest of your text. So from the editing toolbar, open the color swatch and pick the color you wanna use. And I recommend using a color that is aligned with your overall color scheme. So I'll make it this gold color. Next, I recommend making your hyperlinks bold so that they stand out. So click the B icon within the editing toolbar to make the font bold, and there we go. Now it's time to add a link to the text and make it a hyperlink. So this time click the link icon within the editing toolbar. Then you'll have the option to link to a website, email, or document. But for this example, we'll be linking to a web page. So make sure web is selected. Then enter the URL of the site you want to link to. And for this example, I'm just using google.com, but you'd obviously want to use the URL of the page you want to link to that is relevant to your content and the word that you're hyperlinking. Then I always recommend having your hyperlinks open in a new tab if you're linking to an external source. However, if you're linking to a page or post within your site, then have it open in the same tab. But since this is linking to an outside source, I'll leave this box checked so that it opens in a new tab. Then click the Save button. And we now have our hyperlink. All right, so that's gonna do it for the content of the post. Next, let's add the category. 
So if you recall, we already created our categories a little earlier in the video, and anytime you create a post, you'll wanna add it to a specific category. This helps organize your content and also creates a good user experience, allowing your blog's visitors to easily find the specific types of content that they're looking for. Again, this is a best practice, so you always wanna get in the habit of grouping your blog posts into categories every time you create a new post. And to do that, you can either click the Add Categories text below the title or open the post settings in the toolbar. Both will allow you to add the post to a category. Then from here, click Add Categories, and you can actually create a new category or select from the pre-made categories that we created a few minutes ago. So since this post is about poses for beginners, I'll add it to the beginners yoga category. And then since we're in the blog settings, let's go over the meta description. So this is also something that you'll wanna get in the habit of doing for all of your blog posts and pages going forward. The meta description is a brief description that's going to be shown in the search engine results that you can edit within the strikingly post settings. So to update your blog posts meta description, within the post settings, click on where it says change meta description. And when creating your meta description, try to use keywords that you're wanting to rank for and try to keep it within 155 characters. So in the box, go ahead and type out your meta description. And finally, you can create a custom URL for your post if you'd like. By default, it's using the post title, which is highly recommended, but if you wanna change it for any reason, check this use custom URL box and add the new URL slug. And if you plan on creating a custom URL, be sure to use keywords, keep it somewhat short, and use dashes in place of any spaces. So I'm gonna be using the default URL, so I'll keep this box unchecked, and then click the Save button to save our changes. And that's it, our post is now ready to be published. However, before publishing, I highly, highly recommend that you preview your post before making it available to the world. So click the preview button in your toolbar, and this will bring up the preview environment and allow you to see what the post looks like across desktops and mobile devices. And it looks great. Again, I love how easy the Strikingly Web Editor makes getting a blog up and running, and it allows you to create fresh content, helping you improve your SEO and helping your website's visitors' overall user experience. I am biased, but a blog can do wonders for your business, conversions, and web traffic. Okay, so everything looks good, so let's go ahead and publish this. So back at the editor, once you're ready to go, click the Publish button. And then you'll have the option to publish the post now or schedule for later. Scheduling it for a future date could come in handy if you're writing in bulk or you have a specific campaign end date for your post. But for this example, we're going to publish it right now. So click the Publish Now button. And you should get a notification confirming that it's been published and displaying the URL of your blog post as well. And I should point out that yes, this post has technically been published, but the world can't see it yet because we haven't officially launched our website. But once we launch and publish our site, all content moving forward will be live once published. All right, so let's exit out of here really quick. So I'll close this out and click the exit button in the bottom left corner of your toolbar. And then every time you create or publish a blog post, it will be stored here. This is a great way to manage your content and keep track of what's published and what's still a draft. You can also unpublish posts here if you need to, as well as edit them. Additionally, if you click this gear icon, you'll have more options where you can pin the post to the top of your blog feed, duplicate it, copy it, or delete the post completely. And once again, you have the option to unpublish the post if needed, as well as edit it. And if we click on the edit button, it'll take you back to the blog editor where you can make your necessary edits to the content. Just don't forget to republish the post if you make any changes to it. Okay, so now that we have our first blog post, let's go back to our homepage. So click back to site design in the upper left corner of your toolbar. And now anytime you publish a blog post, it will automatically be added to your blog feed. And speaking of your blog feed, Strikingly gives you a few different layout options when it comes to your blog feed. And if you click the layout button in the upper right corner of the section, you could cycle through the different layout types and see which one works best for you and your blog. 
I honestly can't tell you how cool this is because typically with other blogging platforms, if you want to change the entire layout of your blog feed, that's going to be some expensive dead work and would probably cost you a lot of time and money to implement. However, these layout changes can really change the look and feel of your blog feed with a few clicks of the mouse. And once again, pressing the gear icon will open up the layout widget where we have the ability to configure the layout and also set the number of posts per page. I currently have it set to three, but you could change that here by clicking the drop down and change it to four or whatever you'd like. And I obviously only have one blog post published right now, but once you start publishing more blog posts, you can change the number of them that will display in your feed within this layout widget. Then below that, you have the option to show the categories tabs. This creates a menu above your blog feed, displaying all the categories that you've created. This is yet another way to organize your content and give your audience an easy way to navigate your site and find exactly what they're looking for. I love how this looks, so I'm gonna keep it and click the Save button. And we now have our blog feed. It will obviously look a lot more complete once you start adding additional blog posts to it, but you now have a functional and professional looking blog incorporated with your website. All right, we're almost ready to launch, but first let's preview our site up to this point. So within the left corner of your toolbar, click on preview site, and this will open up the preview environment. And if we visit the blog, you'll see that our blog feed is in place and the primary nav looks much better. It isn't all crowded and bunched together. The menu items are spread evenly and everything looks nice and neat. Okay, so that's gonna do it for the blog, nice work. Moving on, next, let's configure your site's overall SEO. All right, we're almost there. Your website is a few minutes away from launching. But before we finish up, there are a few tips that I wanna share with you. The first has to do with SEO, which stands for Search Engine Optimization. So just like your blog posts and pages, we'll wanna configure your site's overall SEO by setting the site basic information. And this will be handled in your site settings. So first, let's set our homepage SEO settings. So within your toolbar on the left, click on Manage. Then click the gear icon next to your homepage and select SEO settings. And this will actually take you to your site's settings within the back end. This will only be like this for your homepage. All of the other pages and posts SEO settings you'll be able to handle by clicking the gear icon. Either way, I'll show you both ways to configure the SEO settings. So for the homepage SEO settings, we'll wanna update the basic information. The first is the site title, category, and site description. The title and description are used in the search engine results, and the category helps the search engines know what your site is about. All of these are important in helping your site rank higher in the search results. So first we have the site title, and if you recall from when we updated our post SEO settings, the SEO titles are used in a few different places on your site, one being in the tab of the browser. This helps the reader distinguish which tab is what, and it creates a good user experience. Next, it's used in the search engine snippets for your search results. A well-organized site title and description can go a long way when it comes to optimizing your site for SEO and improving your ranking in the search results. So these seemingly small details are super important for improving your overall SEO. Okay, so for this example, my site is called Balboa Yoga. So that's what I'll use for the site title. Next, we'll select the category that the site falls under, and clicking that drop-down will show you the options. And this is a business website, so I'll select business from the list, but pick the category that best fits your site. Next is the site description, and this is essentially the meta description. So go ahead and write out your site description in the box provided. And I know I said this a lot, but when creating your meta description, try to use keywords that you're wanting to rank for and try to keep it within 155 characters. Next is the site language. And by default, mine is set to English. And I'm in the USA, so I'm keeping it as English, but feel free to update the language here if you'd like. And keep in mind that this doesn't translate the text of your site, but it does affect some system text that visitors see in your blog feed, store, and social feed. 
like the previous and next buttons. But feel free to test different languages to see what gets changed on your site if you'd like. But like I said, I'm keeping the site language set to English for this example. Next, we have the social share image and favicon. And the social share image is the icon used when your page is shared on social media. And the size must be at least 200 by 200 pixels. Then the favicon is the icon for your site that's used in the browsers tab. And the optimal size for this is 16 by 16 pixels. And to create your social share image and favicon, I recommend using canva.com. This gives you a quick and easy way to create some professional looking images. And for the social share image, I've created a custom sized image that's 200 by 200 pixels. And I tried to keep the design aligned with my site logo, but I think it turned out pretty good. Then for the favicon, Canva didn't let me go as small as 16 by 16 pixels, but I was able to create this image that is 20 by 20 pixels. Either way, it'll work and will look good in the browser tabs. Okay, now that we have our images back at our blog, let's update them. So under the social share image section, I'll click the upload new image link and find the image that I created in Canva. And there we go, looks great. Next is the favicon, so go ahead and upload the new image by clicking that link. And then I'm going to browse my computer and find the image. And we now have our favicon, awesome. Finally, I recommend keeping this box checked. This will enable the Twitter card and will ensure that anytime your blog is shared on Twitter, you'll have a professional looking Twitter card that will display in the Twitter feed when shared by your audience. So that's gonna do it for the basic information and SEO configuration. So go ahead and click the save button. Next, let's configure the SEO for our remaining website pages. And you'll wanna get in the habit of doing this every time you create a new page. So go ahead and click the back to site design button. Then we wanna update the SEO settings for the meet the staff page. So click that gear icon. And then select SEO settings from the list. And this time you'll notice that instead of being taken to the back end of Strikingly, you can handle the SEO settings directly from the web editor. So this time you can create a custom title tag and meta description. Again, it's not only a best practice, but it's great for SEO to always have a custom title tag and meta description for your blog pages and posts. This is how search engines will display your page in the search results, and it's just a good habit to get into when creating new pages. So in the custom title tag, you can create your own or leave it blank. If you leave it blank, it'll use the title of the page followed by your site title, and that's good enough for me, so I'll leave this title blank. Then next is the meta description, and we definitely wanna update this. And if you recall, this will give a quick preview of what your page is about. And remember to use keywords and try to keep it within 155 characters. And there we go. So go ahead and click the save button. And we've now updated this page's SEO settings. Then for the sake of time, I'm gonna skip updating the rest of the page's SEO settings, but you'll wanna do this for all of your pages to ensure you're optimizing your site for the search engines. Just click the gear icon next to each page to access the SEO settings. Remember, practicing good SEO will help your site rank higher in the search engines and help you get in front of more eyeballs. This can not only increase traffic to your website, but to your business as well. And really quick, let's head back to the site design. So in the upper left corner of your toolbar, click the back to site design button. All right, moving on next, let me show you how to update your privacy policy, terms and conditions, and GDPR settings. Okay, so the privacy and legal settings are an aspect of a website that can sometimes get overlooked. But due to the always changing privacy and data landscape, it's extremely important that you have your privacy and legal settings squared away before launching your site. And before we do anything, I wanna clarify that the following information should not be perceived as legal advice. 
I am not a lawyer and by no means should this tutorial be used as any type of legal consultation. I recommend that you reach out to a legal professional if you have any questions or concerns when it comes to how to move forward with your blog's privacy and legal settings. All right, with that being said, Strikingly makes it super simple to get started. So first things first, let's access your privacy settings. And this will be done within your site settings. So go there if you aren't there already. Then open the Show Advanced dropdown and select Privacy and Legal. And this will open your privacy and legal settings where you'll have the ability to hide your site from the search engines. I don't recommend doing that, but you can do that here if you'd like. You also have the ability to password protect your site, but please note that this feature is only available for pro users, so you'll need to upgrade in order to access this feature. And finally, what we're most concerned with is that you can create and configure your privacy policy page, terms and conditions, cookie notification, and the GDPR compliance. So first, let's go over how to configure these settings. The first one is the terms and conditions. Terms and conditions are not required by any state or federal laws, but having them is a best business practice. Essentially, having terms and conditions protects you as a business. Plus, if you're selling products on your site, I recommend creating a terms and conditions. And the way you'll do that is the same way you'd create a privacy policy. So let's go over that really quick. So next is the privacy policy page. And this is actually required and is a necessity in today's digital world. And since we're collecting email addresses and we'll be tracking who visits our site, many laws require you to include a privacy policy on your site that explains your data handling practices. Essentially, it protects your business from legal issues and also helps build your audience's trust. Finally, having a privacy policy page is good for SEO. Google is continually searching for trusted sites to use in the search results, and if you have these pages on your site, like a privacy policy page and a terms of service, then you'll be loved by the search engine bots and will have a better chance at having an improved position in the search engine results. Okay, so to create your terms and conditions and privacy policy pages, head over to freeprivacypolicy.com. This is a free site that lets you generate a free privacy policy and terms and conditions, among other types of legal documents. And I'll put a link to this site in the video description below. But if you click on all free tools in the primary nav, you'll see everything they have to offer, including the free privacy policy and terms and conditions, and much more. And for the sake of time, I'm not going to go through the whole process here, but you'll select the legal doc that you want to create and answer a few questions about your site, and then they'll generate a privacy policy in terms and conditions that you can then use on your site. So back at Strikingly, the way this is handled is you'll check the box next to terms and conditions. Then within that text box, you'll add the content that you want to display for that page. So what you'll have to do is copy the text from the free privacy policy generator website and paste it here. Now I'm just using dummy text as a placeholder, but once you add the text, this will create your terms and conditions. Then the steps for your privacy policy page are the exact same. You'll check the box and that will open the text box and then you'll add your content that you want to display for the privacy policy page. Finally, we have the European Union cookie notification and GDPR compliance. And without getting into the weeds, if there's even a chance that people from the European Union will be visiting your site, you need to activate these two settings. Chances are that there will be people from the EU visiting your site, so I highly, highly recommend checking these two boxes to stay legally compliant. Okay, so that's going to do it for the legal and privacy settings. So go ahead and click the Save button. And there we go, our legal documents are all set and ready to go, and I'll show you what these look like on your live site whenever we launch, which is right now. And really quick, let's head back to the site design. So in the upper left corner of your toolbar, click the Back to Site Design button. And moving on, next, let's finally launch your brand new website. And here we are, it's finally time to launch your website. This is it, the moment you've been waiting for. It's time to show the world what you've been working on and it's time for you to shine. So, back at the editor, to officially launch your site and make it live on the World Wide Web, 
simply click the publish button in the bottom left corner of your toolbar and then you may be asked a few times to upgrade feel free to upgrade your plan or move on with the free site either way for this example I'm keeping with the free plan for now so I'll click the just publish free site button Then strikingly, we'll ask you if you want to update your domain. Again, we're using the free plan for this example, so we'll keep the strikingly subdomain in place for now. So I'll click the next button. Then double check your site title and domain one more time and click the publish now button. And congratulations, your website has been officially published and is live on the internet. Then to see how your live site looks, click on Preview Site in the bottom left corner of your toolbar, and this time select View Live Site. And you'll get to see how the rest of the world will see your website. And it looks amazing. For starters, you'll probably notice that the cookies setting notification is displaying in the bottom left corner of your site. Very nice. And I honestly can go on and on about how easy Strikingly has made this process. It typically takes hours upon hours, even days upon days, to build a professional looking site like this. So just know that their new web editor is saving you a ton of time and money. Then once we scroll down to the footer, you could see those GDPR settings, the privacy policy, and the terms and conditions. They're neatly displaying. Again, this helps to protect you legally and gives your site's visitors peace of mind that you take their security and privacy seriously. Then let's take a look at our online store. Again, this professional looking digital storefront will give you the ability to add an additional revenue stream to your business. And the free plan lets you sell one product on your site. Additionally, the blogging features that come with the free plan will give you the ability to start creating and sharing your content with the world and growing your blog's reach and your audience. Plus, with the free plan, you can publish unlimited blog posts. So now that you have a solid foundation in place, it's time to start writing and sharing your passion with the world. And finally, we have our booking page, giving our customers a way to schedule and reserve their spot in the yoga class. Awesome. Okay, now that you have officially launched your website, there are a few more tips that I recommend doing to help ensure that you're setting yourself up for success. So next, let's go over how to verify your site with Google and submit a sitemap. Okay, so the final two things we're going to do are somewhat technical, but they are extremely important if you want to be found on the search engines. And those two things are verifying your site with Google and submitting a sitemap. So first things first, let's access those settings in the back end of your site. So within your editor, open the settings in the upper left corner of your toolbar. Then open the show advanced dropdown. And this time select services. And this will be where you can add your Google Analytics tracker and verify your site with Google. Now, we're not going to be using the Google Analytics tracker in this video, primarily because Strikingly has their own built-in analytics and tracking that you can access with your free plan. And if you're just starting out, this is more than enough to monitor your traffic. Plus, Google Analytics has a steep learning curve. And again, if you're just starting out, Strikingly's free analytics is just fine. So that leaves us with verifying your site with the Google Webmaster tool. And this is where you'll paste the meta tag from Google Webmaster, also known as Google Search Console. Now, before we go through the steps, I wanna point out that Strikingly has an extremely helpful step-by-step -step guide that they've created that you can access by clicking on this link here. And again, Strikingly has laid out the exact steps that you'll need to take in order to verify and submit your sitemap to Google. Now, I'm going to walk you through those steps. However, I highly recommend that you use this guide whenever you're going through this process. They go into much greater detail and in-depth in terms of what you need to do in order for you to verify and submit your sitemap to Google. All right, the first step in the process is to set up your Search Console account. 
And if you're new to Google Search Console, it's basically tools and reports that help you measure your site's search traffic and performance. You can also fix issues there, and it makes your site shine in the Google Search results. So bottom line, this is good for SEO. And I've included a link to the Search Console in the video description below. And clicking on that link will take you to the Search Console homepage, which is what you're looking at right now. And then go ahead and click the Start Now button to get started. The next on the right hand side in the URL prefix section, enter your site URL. So if you have a regular domain, it will be www.yoursite.com. But since we're using a free strikingly plan, you'll use the strikingly subdomain. So it'll be whatever your site domain is dot mystrikingly dot com. And please be aware that you have to add the HTTPS prefix before your domain here. Then click the continue button and Google will begin to check for verification. Then for this example, we'll be using the HTML meta tag. So open the HTML tag tab. And from here, you'll be given the steps to get started. Now, strikingly only requires a certain part of the meta tag. Now, as you can see in their help doc, you'll only need what comes after the content within the meta tab. And they've highlighted that in red. So here's what I recommend doing. Back at Search Console, click the copy button and this will copy the entire snippet of HTML. Then once copied, I recommend pasting it to some sort of doc, like a Google Doc. This way you can easily highlight and copy the exact portion of the code that you'll need for Strikingly. So again, you'll wanna highlight everything that comes after content that is in between the quotation marks, and then copy it. I'm on a Mac, so I'm pressing Command-C on my keyboard to copy it. Then back at Strikingly, simply paste it in the field provided underneath the Verify Google Webmaster tool. Then click the Save button at the bottom of the screen. And then after it's been saved in Strikingly, head back to Google Search Console. And within the HTML tag section, click the Verify button. And since this is my blog within Google Search Console account, I'm not going to be verifying this site within my Search Console account. But after you click the Verify button, Google will complete the site verification process. And I should also point out that after you click Verify, it could take anywhere from 10 minutes all the way up to 48 hours for your site to be verified. So just keep that in mind as you're going through this process. Additionally, once verified, you should see the following message upon successfully linking your new property to Google Search Console. Again, if you have any issues or come across any error messages when trying to verify your site, I highly recommend visiting the Strikingly Help Doc that you can access here by clicking this link. They walk you through the process step by step. Also, feel free to leave a comment below if you need some extra help. I'm always happy to help out. Okay, so once your site is verified, you'll have access to the Google Search Console dashboard for your web property, which is what you're looking at right now. Again, this is home base for reports that help you measure your site's search traffic and performance, fix issues, and makes your site shine in the Google search results. And one final thing we're gonna do to help ensure that your site shines in the search results is create and submit your sitemap to Google. And if you're unfamiliar with what a sitemap is, it's basically an easy way for you to inform search engines about pages on your site that are available for crawling. A sitemap is a file where you can list the web pages of your site to tell Google and other search engines about the organization of your site's content. Search engine web crawlers like Googlebot read this file to crawl your blog. So to create and submit your sitemap to Google, within your Search Console dashboard, click on Sitemap within the menu on the left, Then where it says add a new sitemap, enter your sitemap URL in the field provided. And if you already see your domain here followed by a blank space, type sitemap.xml in the text field. But if the field is completely blank like it is in this example, type out your entire domain followed with sitemap.xml and click the submit button. Then after a few moments, you should get a success message and it'll be listed below in the submitted sitemaps. However, if you run into any issues, just visit Strikingly's help doc. They walk you through the process and through every scenario. You can also reach out to their customer support team by clicking on the question mark icon in the bottom right corner of your web editor. And finally, you can leave a comment below the video and I'd be happy to help out in any way I can. All right, the last thing I wanna show you is how to access the analytics and built-in tracking that comes with your free Strikingly plan. So within your site settings, click on Analytics. 
And this will show you things like unique visitors, where they're coming from, device used, and traffic sources. Again, this is more than enough to get started with analytics and to help you understand your website's audience. And congratulations, your website is now live and properly configured for success. Again, I can't thank you enough for allowing me to be a part of your journey, but it's only just begun. Now it's time for you to implement the lessons you've learned in this video to begin to grow your brand, audience, and revenue. And I wish you the best of luck with your new website, and please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions or need some additional assistance with your site. I'm always happy to help. So that's gonna do it for this video. If you found it helpful, I'd greatly appreciate it if you would like, comment, share, and subscribe to the Blog With Ben YouTube channel. And also now that you've launched your website, check out these two videos on email marketing and blog monetization. They'll help you grow your audience and earn a passive income with your site. And as always, your support means a great deal to me and my family. And for that, I thank you. So with that being said, I'll see you in the next video and thanks for watching.